Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready? It's time for Effingham Hearts Football on your home for local sports, 97.9 XFM. Let's go to the sideline for the pregame show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Taylorville High School, the home of the Tornadoes for Apollo Conference football action. It's Effingham at Taylorville. I'm Greg Sapp, Dustin White alongside. C.J. Schmidt is going to be videotaping the game, and Caleb back at the studio. So we have you covered on this Friday night. And, Dustin, rest of the season, there's no denying it's a must-win Friday night. Yeah, Effingham can't afford, really, to lose another game this season, and that's not an easy spot to be in when you've only played four games, but that's where they are, one and three to start the season. Uh, tough loss against Matt Toon last week. Uh, the game that was entertaining to watch, but uh, one that was probably frustrating to coach at times. So, yeah, now it uh, comes down to – basically needing to win out and if you want to have a shot at the playoffs uh, but uh, starts with starts with the first game and that's Taylorville here on the road against the Tornadoes a team that comes in at two and two but a team that Effingham ought to be able to match up with I would think. I think so uh, we certainly have them on numbers uh, it's a pretty small roster for Taylorville and that'll be interesting they are two and two. Effingham is one and two. So overall, they have a better record. But Effingham's one and two in the Apollo, and they're zero oh and two in the Apollo. So we have an edge there. Yeah, you mentioned the numbers: thirty-three kids on the varsity yeah. football roster for Taylorville, and that's uh, not really what you're used to seeing. And it's a program that's had some success lately, but. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So we talk all the time about Effingham's numbers being, you know, a positive factor for them uh, and helping them late in games. But it it'll, it remains to be seen whether that will play out or not. But it's certainly something that has to be in the back of your mind uh, as, as they go into this road game here in the Apollo Conference. Yeah. This is a turf field at Taylorville, so that's always a factor too. And we don't expect any rain until after midnight. That's the latest forecast. And so... So that shouldn't affect things. But it is a windy day, and the Hearts do like to throw the football. And the understanding is that Cameron Heimsness, the quarterback for Taylorville, puts it up too. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that affects any of the game planning coming into the contest tonight. It'll be interesting to see if some of the interceptions that took place last week will affect the game planning as well. If uh, You know, I think that... Uh, Tanner Pontius had the kind of growing pains game that a young quarterback is going to have from time to time. Uh, it'll be, I think I'll just be curious to see one, you know, how they how they move forward from that, and two, what kind of what kind of confidence he has coming out of that. Uh, it, it, again, a frustrating game. There were ten turnovers between the two teams, but uh, you know that's not likely to happen again. I wouldn't think, and hopefully, just a lot of lessons learned from the Effingham club despite the loss. It'll be interesting between if you were there or if you were listening. It was a frustrating game because of all the turnovers and. Matt Toon turned it over almost as much as Effingham mm -hmm. did. So you wished that Effingham could have taken advantage of those men. You'd be at 500. You'd be up on 500 in the conference. But there's not a whole lot we can do about no, that. No, it's all in the past. Uh, there's there's absolutely nothing that wringing your hands about it now can do. All you can do is look at the film, you know, figure out what went wrong with the reads, the decisions, the throws, and, and go from there and grow and learn from it because, uh, you know, Mr. Pontius is – you know, got another year and a half, hopefully, of being the starting quarterback for this club to go. And, again, it's the kind of game you're going to have. Uh, not a ton of varsity experience for him, and, and he ran into a pretty good team. So we'll see uh, We'll see what happens going forward. Absolutely. I had a moment of silence, and now I think we're going to have the national anthem. Bands out on the field at the 50-yard line, so they'll be honoring America here in a moment. It is homecoming at Taylorville, and they're having the ceremonies before the game starts. So let's send it back to the studios, Caleb. More to come in a minute. It's Effingham at Taylorville on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. 
Back at Taylorville, it is homecoming at Taylorville, and they're having the ceremonies before the game, so that's a little unusual, so there won't be any unlength or uh, un unnatural, unusual halftime length because they're getting it all taken care of before the game. So we'll mention that. Effingham, two more weeks still homecoming because uh, the Hearts head to Mount Zion next week, and then they are home to Lincoln. That'll be homecoming night for Effingham. And then they'll wrap up the regular season with Breeze Modern Day and Highland. And that's how the season will conclude as far as the regular season. We hope not the season itself for Effingham. So we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks with homecoming. And traditionally playing at Taylorville and at Mount Zion that would fill you with a certain amount of foreboding. But tonight, and I don't want to sound cocky when, when my team's one and three, but you feel like the Hearts ought to have a pretty good shot here tonight. Well, no, I, yeah, it's certainly not a case where I'm thinking, you know, Effingham's going to have to do everything right to get a win tonight. That doesn't seem to be the case. But I also think that Taylorville's going to be good enough, especially offensively, that you're not going to be able to have a ton of lapses either. I think this is just kind of a case of probably – two middling Apollo Conference teams coming at each other and the course of their season could be kind of riding on how this game goes. That's what we said about Effingham and Matt Toon last week mm -hmm. and it was true. And if Effingham should happen to win this game, I think that it's going to be true for them and Mount Zion next week because Mount Zion is most likely going to have to be keeping pace with Muhammad. I don't I don't even know off the top of my head who Muhammad plays, but I'll bet they're going to win. So, you know, they're they're pretty good and it's going to be uh, kind of a race to to stay in the hunt with them. And I think you're right about your prediction because Muhammad who is undefeated is at Charleston who is unwon. Mm. So, yes. that's tonight's game. So, well, uh, we would suppose that the Bulldogs are going to have it their way. They're 4-0, and uh, they are the cream of the crop in the Apollo. But Mount Zion can score a lot of points, and so that's why you always have to be your on your guard against them. I frankly don't know much about Taylorville, Dustin. I don't see that they have a running game beyond their quarterback. But Mahimesness is a senior and a familiar name if you've been watching them, if you've been coming across Taylorville over the last uh, little bit. And, and they have always traditionally liked to put the ball in the air and done so well and put points on the board. So that's that's going to be task number one. And, and that's the thing that teams have on occasion been able to do against Effingham is throw the ball deep and have some success with it. So so certainly uh, there's not going to be any surprises, no coaching changes here. I think that Coach Hefner and Coach Odom are pretty familiar with each other at this point. It's going to be an execution thing. It's going to be who plays the best football, and I think that it's going to be an evenly matched game enough to the point where whichever team, whichever team does its job the most will probably walk out of here with a win tonight. This is a great rivalry, Taylorville and Effingham. I have been watching Taylorville and Effingham play football since the 1970s. They have played each other way back then when Don Anderson and Jack Klosterman coached against each other. And in all the intervening years, even when Taylorville left and went to the Central State Eight for a while, they still would match up occasionally. And then it was good news for all of us who've watched this rivalry and Taylorville came back to the Apollo because it, it has just been a tremendous rivalry. Yeah, there's been good games between these two schools since Taylorville been back in the league. Um, some have gone Effingham's way, some have not. You know, it's and that's just another thing. I guess probably more subconsciously than because I am some sort of an expert on Taylorville's football team this year. But I think probably just in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like pretty much every year when we play these guys, chance to beat them, chance to get beat by them. It's just sort of the way it goes. And so why wouldn't you just keep thinking that the same thing is probably true this year? You bet. It's a beautiful field. We haven't touched on it at least not too much so far. This is a turf field here at Taylorville, and it's a beauty. And the, I think, seam runs in to the track or up to the track, and uh, it, it's just a great field. Obviously, it drains well, and so it'll be fun. And I think it's fun for the kids to have the opportunity to play on artificial surface. Well, it used to be that if you wanted to do that, you were going to have to make it to state pretty much, yeah. right? You're going to have to get to play on the college field and even 
even that's not a thing that all colleges have had until more recently. But yeah, now it's a thing. If you're in the Apollo Conference, you know, you go to Mount Zion, you get to do it. You go to Taylorville, you get to do it. For Effingham, uh, they go to Breeze, they get to do it. So it, it's become a little more normal. But, yeah, I still think it gives you that uh, it gives you that subtle feeling of like uh, we're playing at a little higher level than just uh, Central Illinois high school football. And Mattoon's in the process yes. of getting a turf field. So next time, which I guess will be next year, we ought to be playing on a turf field at Mattoon. Well, Mattoon's already doing it since they're playing at Eastern this year. That's Eastern's true. had theirs in place for a while, so sure. there you go. So it ought to be interesting. Dustin talked about the Apollo. In addition to Effingham at Taylorville, Muhammad Seymour's at Charleston, and Mount Zion's at Lincoln tonight. That could be interesting. We'll watch her scores on that. Mattoon's the odd team out this week. They host Collinsville, and that'll be at Eastern tonight. Newton's at Red Hill. That's a Saturday game, 1 o'clock kickoff at Bridgeport. Cumberland plays tonight at Villa Grove. Of course, the Pirates suffered their first loss of the season last week after being ranked in the top five in the state in 1A. So be interesting to see how they bounce back. Yeah, I think they were riding pretty high, uh, having beaten Tuscola, and then go into a game against Arcola that Tuscola had had their way pretty well with Arcola. And so you think, well, that's a game we ought to win, and then not, uh, not get the W there, that's... That's one, you know, hopefully for them, that's the that's the hiccup on the schedule, right? They get it out of their system and go the rest of the way. But still a really, really good Pirates club this year. And they've been good for a while now, but yeah. I think seem to have even turned and found another gear this season. Johnson City's coming up to Florida tonight. Gillespie's at Vandalia. Only Richland County is at Marshall. Those are the other games in our area. Let's take one more quick break. Back with a kickoff in a minute. It's Effingham at Taylorville here on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. 97.9 XFM, WXEF and Effingham. Action at Taylorville High School. And the Hearts will be kicking, and they'll be heading to, I guess that's the north. Armando Estrada ready for the kickoff from the 40. Hope you're ready, too. Thanks for joining us tonight. Estrada is set. The officials look like they're ready. And Dustin and I are ready. CJ's ready down below us. Capturing all the video highlights of this one. And there's the whistle, and away we go. There's the kickoff. A high one and near the goal line, and it's dropped by Rither Turnman. He still can't handle it. Finally, he picks it up, and it got stripped, and the Hearts may have the ball inside the 15-yard line. He tried to pick it up, and then he lost it. And I guess Taylorville does hold on to the football, but they have woeful field position. Yeah, that was uh, Hunter Gerlich, number 43, that was receiving that kick, and he had trouble from the get-go. It was to the three. He fumbled it a couple of times, got it, tried to run with it, but then lost it again on his way down. And after all that, they're going to put it, uh, looks like maybe at the 12-yard line. That's well there. That's where they will get started on their first possession of the night, Taylorville's own 12-yard line. So let's see if the defense can take full advantage of this opportunity. Again, it's Cameron Heimsness that is the Taylorville quarterback. He's got him down from the shotgun, and he comes to the near side, and the Hearts shut it down. Might have got a couple of yards. Good pursuit by the Hearts. And Heimsness might have got two. I'm trying to pick up names. Noah Jones is over there. And also want to give credit to the Hearts. Blake Bushu, they were in on that stop. So a gain to the 14, and it's second and eight. Just started, and again, the return man for Taylorville fumbled the kickoff. So they have really deep in their own territory field position. There's a handoff. This time he was up under center, and boy, the hearts caused a loss. Take your pick. Dalton Fox is in there, and a cast of thousands. Castillo's in there. 
And I want to also give a shout out to Connor Thompson all in on that stop. Didn't actually end up handing off either. Just a fake on that one. And then Heimsness ran left uh, for the second straight time. And I don't know. Maybe original line of scrimmage might be where they've got the football back at the 12, it looks like to me. Yep. So those two that he gained, he gave right back. So it's third and 10 at their own 12. Hearts with a golden opportunity here if they can get the stop. Again from the shotgun, looking to throw. Here come the Hearts. There's the pass. It's up for grabs, and it just about was intercepted. It went off the hands of Osvaldo Angel back here in the corner and off his hands incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth, and obviously they're going to be looking to kick it away here. Yeah, man coverage for Ozzie, and he was able to be the one who got his hand on it down the sideline on the near side. So quick uh, three and out, and it's going to be, looks like Heimsness is also going to do the punting, or at least act like he's going to do the punting. I can't imagine they would run a fake from their own end zone. So he's back deep right about at the goal line. So old number one ready for the punt. And there's the snap, it's good punt. There's the kick, it's low, and it's gonna run, and it's gonna benefit Taylorville, but the Hearts are still gonna take over in Taylorville possession. On their end of the field, it'll be first and 10 for Effingham at Taylorville's 48-yard line. So a nice job by the defense sets up the offense. Yeah, 36-yard punt. There was nobody deep for Effingham on that uh, punt. They were just trying to put as much pressure on him as possible, and they did get a pretty decent amount, but he was able to roll it a little ways. But, uh, yeah, Effingham, a 48-yard field. You'll take that. Absolutely. And yeah, let's see how things go for Tanner Pontius, his first series of the night. Up under center, hard shift in the backfield. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. Keegan Baker on his feet, and he gets to the 45, so a gain of three. It'll bring up a second and seven. And yeah, nothing would complement a good stop on defense like uh, immediately moving the football down the field a little bit for the offense, and that was a pretty good run for Baker to get started, about a three-yard pickup. So second and seven, and again, the Hearts are in Taylorville territory at the Tornado 45, and Ponte's going to stay up under center. They bring... Estrada from the near side. Here's Baker, big handoff, and he's inside yeah. the 40 and a first down. A little bit of over-pursuit around the edge there, and the man for Taylorville that got in the backfield quickly realized that he was in the wrong place. Meanwhile, Baker with a lot of room in front of him, and not quite a first down, but uh, pretty close. Yeah, I'm wrong. He got five to the 40. So it's second down and two, third down and two. Very manageable situation, especially since we're probably already in four down territory being in Taylorville's territory. Here's the handoff, Baker up the gut, still on his feet. He's inside the 45 and he hits the deck and that's plenty enough for a Hart's first down. Just took it up the middle, nothing fancy, but very functional. They'll spot it at the 34, Dustin, so a gain of six. And a new set of downs for Effingham. That's a promising start. Effingham getting a little bit more yardage on each carry as they ran it three straight times and moved the chains. And, yeah, now you are start to feel confident and see what you can do here with the next set of downs. All right, first and ten at Taylorville's 34. Pontius stays under center. Oh, and the ball got slapped loose, or he just dropped it, and he's got it back, and he runs to the far side of the field and is out of bounds around the 33-yard line. I think that was knocked out of his hands because he was uh, he was looking to throw right. I think he was going to make a throw into the flats to his right. Ball got knocked out of his hands. He recovered it and made a little something out of nothing there. Ended up getting a yard out of the deal, so it's second and nine at the 33. So second and nine. Yeah, he was coming back, looking to throw, and all of a sudden, thud, ball's on the ground. Yeah, someone came around the blind side and got a hand on it. Effingham fortunate to still have possession. Second and nine. Look like he's going to throw, and they're after him, but he stepped around the defender. Good work, and he's still on his feet. He's got a big, huge field. He gets near the 20 before they take him down. Yeah, again, I don't think that was a design run for Tanner either, but he realized he was in big trouble, dropped back to pass, and saw a guy coming at him, and then just stepped up in the pocket and then took off with a good little move, got all the way to the 22-yard line. Gain of 11. That worked out well. So... The ball gets slapped loose. He got a yard. There's one that they were after him. He gets a, an 11-yard gain and a new set of downs for the Hearts at Taylorville's 22. So, so far, so good tonight. There's the snap. Hand off to Baker. Keegan gets to the 20 and maybe inside the 20. We'll see about the spot here. But he got a couple on first down. 
And so far, Taylorville's getting some pretty good penetration around the edges, but Effingham is able to find some space between tackles for their guys to run, and they pick up a couple more yards there. Gain a two to the 20 at second and eight. No score. This is the Hart's first possession of the night after they forced a three and out by Taylorville. And, of course, that means the Hearts get the ball to start the second half, so you got a whole lot of positives potentially working here tonight. Second and eight. They bring Arstrada closer to the line. There's the handoff. And Baker up the gut, and Keegan's still on his feet, and he gets it inside the 15 before they take him down. Nice run. The Taylorville saying the ball's out. And they signal tornado football. Wow. Baker was struggling to get that extra yard, and the ball came loose. And they'll put it down inside the 15 at the 13-yard line, Dustin. So there's a seven-yard gain for Baker. And then the fumble, and Taylorville gets the football back, first and 10 for them at their own 13-yard line. So the defense is called again quickly to respond well. No score, 7-18 to go in the first quarter as we start this drive. Next week, the Hearts are at Mount Zion, 7 o'clock kickoff. The week after that, it's homecoming to Lincoln. So first and 10 for Taylorville at their 13. A fake, and there's the handoff, and Heimsness takes it out across the 15. And now I see why I couldn't find any rushing stats other than Heimsness. It's because he carries the ball all the time. Yeah, they certainly like to pretend he's going to hand it off to somebody <laughs> just to keep it interesting. But he has kept it uh, every time when they've had the ball on the ground so far. He picked up a couple three yards on that play. Gain of two right at the 15. So second and eight. Nice night here at Taylorville. A little breezy. We'll see if that is a factor. Of course, now they do hand off and a run up the middle, and he gets close to the 20-yard line, so a decent gain. We'll pick up a ball carrier for you. There he is finally, number four for the Tornadoes, and that's Carter Ostermeyer. Carter Ostermeyer. So he gains to the 20. That's a gain of five. And so it's third and... About two. They're in about two. They've got him in the shotgun here on third and two. He carries, the quarterback carries, and I think the Hearts might have stopped him. Got dragged down from behind there. I don't know how much momentum he had going forward to carry him past the sticks. It looks like maybe not quite enough. Yeah, he gets it. They mark it at the 22, and that's the two yards they needed. So it is a first down for Taylorville. That's their first one of the night. 5.57 to go, opening quarter, no score. Hearts were driving and had good field position, but a fumble gave the ball back to Taylorville. So the Tornadoes have a first and 10 at their own 22. They got those two yards they needed on that play. Again, their quarterback, Heimsness, when they're running the football, he's by and large the man. They do hand it off here to the deep back. And he drives to maybe the 24, and now the Hearts drive him back, and the, the Hearts are saying the ball came loose. The officials are saying, but he was down. So it'll remain Taylorville football. Jackson Myers, ball carrier that time. Does that sound plausible? Yeah, number 28, Jackson Myers, the ball carrier for Taylorville. And from the 22, Dustin, it's a gain to the 25, ah, four. Give him two to the 24. I shouldn't mess up with turf field. Pretty easy to spot. So second and eight. And it might have been offside out here. They throw and the pass is incomplete. Heinzness got it and threw to the far sideline and receiver had to dive for it and came up empty. It uh, kind of felt Watching the near side of the play, the opposite side of where the throw went, that maybe the receiver lined up wide left might have flinched a little bit before that ball was snapped, but no call. And I think in this, at this point on third and eight, deep in Taylorville territory still, you will probably take the incomplete pass and the loss of down over the five-yard penalty and uh, see what you can get done here on third. I would imagine Taylorville probably going to look to throw again. Yeah, I really thought their receiver here on the near side had broken early, but third and eight. 
They are at their 24. Here's a snap from the shotgun. He runs, and he gets it up the middle, and he gets near the 30, which is not enough for a first down. So it is going to be fourth down here for the Tornadoes. It's going to be fourth and not a whole lot. It'll be interesting to see what, how confident they are. It looks like maybe actually the 29 is where they're going to set it down at. So. Gain of five, 24 to the 29. So fourth and three, Dustin. Looks like they're shuffling some personnel. And Effingham seems to think that a punt's coming as Westendorf gets deep and several guys come off the field for the Hearts. Heimsness is back to punt. And there's the snap he is going to kick. And he gets it up in the air. And the Hearts are going to return this one. It's taken at the 45, and a man falls down. Boy, that would have been interesting to see what kind of return he could have got together. But he hit the deck. The ball is returned out there by Brady Stortson. And Brady was trying to cut to the near side here and lost his footing. Ends up at Taylorville's 47. So once again, really good field position for the Hearts to start a drive. Yeah, only about a 27-yard punt for Heimsness that time, and Westendorf returns it across midfield. Pretty pretty good field position, got to take care of the football. Up under center as, Pony, as uh, Pontius has been all night, and look at John Westendorf. Holy moly, does he make a difference when he comes into a game, takes it inside the 40, I think they'll mark it at the 38, but they may sit it down at the 37. Yeah, given the nose of the football at the 37. So from the 47 to, boy, right about the 37, it's second down and maybe half a yard. Nice run by Westendorf. So he and Keegan Baker trying to complement each other at the running back spot tonight. There's the handoff up again the middle, and once again, Westendorf has the first down and then some. He's near the 30-yard line before they take him down. Well, Effingham had very little trouble actually moving the football on its opening possession. It was just a matter of losing their grip on it, so they need to pick up right back where they left off. That one's at the 32. So a gain of five, and plenty enough for a first down. So first and 10 for the Hearts at Taylorville's 32, just outside of three minutes to go in the opening quarter. Still no score. There's Westendorf again going mm. left side of center and he pounds his way inside the 25. And that was a great run by him because he cut to his right, had a couple of gray jerseys coming at him, only one blocker for the two of them, but he just sidestepped everything, went back to the middle of the field and turned it into a really nice game. They call it a seven yard gallop from the 32 right to the 25. And you mentioned the gray, usually Taylorville for 100 years has had yellow and purple. They got gray. Here's a handoff, Westendorf, not much there, and the ball's, ball's loose again. And let's see if Effingham recovered this one. Holy cow, two possessions and two fumbles. I think the Hearts gonna are going to keep this one, yeah. Man, but, but it's, it's a problem. The ball's been on the turf now three times, and we're not even through the first quarter yet. It ends up at the 26, so they lost one. So it certainly could have been a whole lot worse. But it's third and four. Third and four for the Hearts at Taylorville's 26. Stortzman stays under center. Here's the handoff. It's Westendorf again, and he goes to left side. He's to the 20, and the Hearts get the first down. Nice gallop as he got from the 26 to the 20, a gain of six. And the Hearts have a new set of downs. Yes, John 27 yards on his first five carries. Keegan Baker 23 on his first five carries. And Pontius with 12 yards on a couple of carries. The Hearts are having no trouble running the ball. They haven't thrown yet. Let's see what happens here on first and 10. Handoff, Westendorf again. Keep running it till you. they show that they, they can stop it, and he's inside the 15. Well, and I don't know that they can. It looks to me as if Effingham is moving the pile pretty well in the middle of the field, and, in fact, the running backs, it's taken a couple, three Taylorville players to finally drag them down. Effingham seems to be winning the physical war uh, so far. Gain of six from the 20 to the 14. That'll make it second and four. There's a minute left in the first quarter. No score here at Taylorville. Hart's driving again. Let's hope they can finish this one off successfully. There's the snap. Westendorf up the middle. Big hole. He's inside the five. It's going to be first and goal, Effingham. What a great middle 
The guys were pulling. He went just left off center and a huge gain to the three. So from the 14 to the three, an 11 yard gain and a new set of downs. And it really hasn't been a case, Greg, of, of Effingham having like these truck size holes to run right. through. Again, it's just bowling people over and out muscling them and picking up a lot of extra yardage after first contact. And the rest of the story is the Hearts have them numbers and by the end of the game. Let's see what impact that has. First and goal at the three. Hand off Westner. Boy, he got hammered. In the he ends up maybe right back at the line of scrimmage. Looks like no gain. They might have given him one. They're able to stack things up in the box a little bit now with so much, not or not much space between <laughs> the, them and the goal line. So at uh, their time, not a lot of space for West North to work with. They did give him a yard to the two, Dustin, and there is the end of the first quarter. Been a fun one so far. After one here at Taylorville, Effingham nothing, Taylorville nothing on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. We're ready for the second quarter. That first one flew by. Yeah, well, that's because the ball did not fly. Only one pass attempted between these two teams, so you keep the ball on the ground. The clock's going to keep running, and keeping the ball on the ground has been a good recipe for Effingham so far. They're up to 80 yards rushing on uh, their first 14 attempts, 15 attempts, rather, so why, why change what's working for you? First and goal at Taylorville's two. Pontius up under center on the first play of the second quarter. Hand off. Westendorf up the middle, touchdown Effingham. He bowled his way in for a score and the Hearts take a 6-0 lead. The score with 11.54 to play in the second quarter. That was nice execution first to last. So the Hearts with a touchdown on the two yard run by Westendorf. And they're gonna kick for one. Ozzy Angel will try the extra point. And there's the snap, a low snap, but they got it down. Here's the kick, and I don't think it's good. It ends up off to the right. So that was problematic from the start. So the kick's no good, but the score is, and that's the bottom line. It's 6 nothing Effingham. Back with the kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Tackle. Oh, he fell down. Wow, the kickoff back inside the 20 and a great return by Taylorville. They're out across the 40-yard line before the Hearts can make a stop. Yeah, that was uh, Clark Rayar. Uh, taken out at the 10 yard line and finding a seam in the middle of the field. And he was near midfield before he was finally brought down 45 yard line in fact. So a 35 yard return. Taylorville in pretty good field position to start this drive. It's just their second, third drive of the night. Second drive of the night because they turned it over on their other one. Is that right? They started the game with the ball. They punted on their first, they've punted twice now. Very good. So first and 10 for Taylorville at their 45-yard line. Hearts lead at 6-0. They fake a handoff. Heimsness keeps. He is to midfield and into Effingham territory before they finally take him down. That's a nice run on first down. They'll score it at the Effingham 48, so a gain of seven there, and it's second and three. So they're into Hearts territory. We're just into the second quarter. Again, Effingham scoring drive, nine plays, 47 yards. It took 403. Highlighted by John Westendorf's two-yard touchdown run. The kick was no good. A little problems on the snap. 
But the Hearts are in front, 6-0, and we're already into the second quarter in this one game. So let's see what happens. Taylorville at Effingham's 48. Heimsness up under center. There's the snap. He fakes a handoff, keeps it, and he gets inside the 45. There is a flag in the backfield for Taylorville, so let's see what this is about. Illegal shift, I believe. The flag's thrown at Taylorville's 47, so let's see where this one ends up. They set it down at the 47. Now they'll administer the foul. So it's going to be at the 47. So it ends up they gained five and lost five. They, got, they gained five and then five on the penalty. So the ball is at the 47. Excuse me. The ball was at the 48. Now it's at the 47. Yeah, it's five There's yard, your five-yard five yard penalty for the line scrimmage. Here's a pass, and it's caught at about Effingham's 45-yard line. The pass is complete to Joe Lyons. Joe Lyons, the receiver for Taylorville there. And it is marked at Effingham's 44. So from their 48 to Effingham's 44, a gain of eight. And that will make it first down. They have it first down at Effingham's 44-yard line. Joe Lyons with the catch there. Hymanus up under center. There's the snap, and he just bowls his way forward. Nothing fancy there, and he gets near the 40-yard line by the time the whist before the whistles finally sound. They're going to call it the 41, so a gain of three. That'll make it second and seven. Kind of interesting play call on first down. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they thought that they were still trying to get the first down there. I don't know how you could miss it with the PA guy at the <laughs> field here <laughs> saying it loud enough for everybody within a three-mile radius to, to hear it. So the gain of three to the 41. Hearts lead at 6 nothing, but Taylorville into Effingham territory. They hand it off, and boy, there is nothing. The Hearts middle, great effort there. That's number four for the Tornadoes again. Carter Ostemeyer, and it's to the 40, so he got a yard, and it's third down now, still about six to go, so let's see if they put it up, they try to pass a few plays ago, just can't get over how much Ostermeyer sounds like Oscar Meyer, that's the only thing that's running through my head right now because I'm, I'm just a child, really. But I have seen nothing to indicate he's a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no baloney. <laughs> oh, aren't we clever? <laughs> we have a timeout. 8.39 to go in the second quarter. We'll go through all our pithy sayings here when we're gone. Back in a minute on 97.9 XFL. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever, Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. So the timeout, there's 8.39 remaining in the second quarter. We're at Taylorville, Effingham in front, 6-0. On a touchdown run by John Westendorf. It was a thing of beauty, that drive. Just strong, strong arm football. Now Taylorville, third and six at Effingham's 40. Big play here. Heimsness up under center. There's the snap. He does hand off, and he might have got a couple. That's Ostermeyer again. They're going to give it to the 37, I believe, is where the spot will be. So that'll be gain of three. And that's going to bring up a fourth and three. So they got three to the 40, excuse me, to the 37, and now it's fourth and three. Another one of those big plays. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to decide. They're at the 37, so... You're not 
you're not giving Effingham a super short field if you decide to go for it here, but apparently Taylorville's going to go ahead and call a timeout to talk it over before they do anything. Yep, 7.58 to go on the second. It's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing here on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. So it's fourth down and three. Taylorville with the ball at the Hearts 37. They do a little shifting on their line, Taylorville does. There's the snap. He's going to throw. It's across the middle, and he overthrew his man, and it'll be Effingham football. Yeah, that throw wasn't even close, trying to lead a man down the middle of the field. And uh, I, he, was, he was a good three steps, three steps ahead of his receiver with the throw there. The intended receiver by the bye was Joe Lyons, and he clearly overthrew him, so Effingham gets the football. It'll be first and 10 for the Hearts at their own 37. So as well as the offense executed that touchdown drive, I've been thrilled with the defense tonight, Dustin. Yeah, they've done a good job. They haven't allowed the Taylorville to move the ball on the ground very much. And so then they, they've uh, it, it had to throw in obvious passing downs, and Effingham's been able to defend that pretty well also. Yeah, and remember that that drive for Taylorville started near midfield, and they had to give it up at the 37 of Effingham. Here's a handoff. And Westendorf driving and diving, just left off tackle. He gains to the 40, so a gain of three at second and seven. And it just feels like the, the way Effingham is able to run the football right now, that, again, the only thing that stalled them out so far is putting the ball on the ground. And it all goes back to what we talked about in the open. You know, just if you execute, take care of your business, whichever team takes care of his business the most is probably going to get the win, and that seems to be how this game is shaping up so far. Second and seven for Effingham at their own 40. Potty is going to throw, throws it out in the flats. It's caught in a nice gain, and it should be enough for a first down. Yeah, finding his new favorite target out there, Armando Estrada. He Armando had a coming out party last week in the loss to Mattoon, caught, I don't know, nine passes, I think it was. Mm -hmm. A bulk of the work for Effingham, and Pontius' first completion of the night goes to Armando. Hmm, frustrating spot. The gains to the 46, so that's a six-yard gain. That is not enough for a first down. So the Hearts have it third and one at their own 46-yard line. Pontius is going to keep it himself, bowls toward and gets toward midfield, maybe in Taylorville territory by the time they finally take him down. Yeah, I'm telling you, Effingham is owning the middle of the field right now. Those plays where you think they're done after a yard or two, Effingham just keeps pushing the pile. That was an old-fashioned rugby scrum, and by the time it was all <laughs> said and done, it was on the opposite 46, 46 to 46 there. Gain of eight. And a new set of downs for Effingham. Now they're into Taylorville territory. 6.20 to go, second quarter. Hearts in front, 6-0 here at Taylorville. Pontia stays up under center. There's the snap, here's the handoff. Boy, Westendorf, huge, her, huge burst of speed. Got it inside the 45. They're gonna mark it at the 42, so a gain of four. And a nice run, and boy, Westendorf, he can, he can carry the groceries, man. Yep, 54 yards on 11 carries for him, and you're right, he hits he hits the hole uh, with a lot of energy. Uh, that time, Taylorville able to sort of neutralize him after that initial burst, but uh, he has done a good job, again, running after contact. All the Effingham rushers have done a good job with that. Walls and Estrada are split opposite sides of the field. Here's the throw, and it is to Estrada here on the near side of the field, but not for much. He got to the 40, and now Taylorville kind of takes him down quite some distance. Yeah, it's, he, he ends up about six, seven yards back from where his forward progress carried him. Just a short little uh, out pattern to, to Estrada, only a pickup of a couple yards. Yep, you're exactly right. Gain of two to the 40. So the completion, it just gives Taylorville one more thing to watch. Third and four, Effingham with the ball at Taylorville's 40-yard line. Pontius under center. 
Here's the snap, handoff, Westendorf cut it back up field, gets to the 38, maybe the 37, let's check the spot. It's not enough for a first down, it's going to leave a fourth down play, but uh, with maybe a couple yards to pick up, if I'm Effingham, I'm not hesitating to, to go for it right here. Gain of two, to the 38. Well, the Hearts rushing totals are going to be phenomenal if this keeps up. Six nothing Hearts, four and a half minutes left before halftime game. So if you're just joining us, you missed most of the first half. Let's see what happens here. It's a big series here. Fourth down. Pontius long count trying to get him to jump. Now he steps back and the Hearts are going to call time. They were trying to get Taylorville to jump offside and give him the first down that way. And said the Hearts called time. 4.18 to go second quarter. Back in 30, Caleb. It's 6-0 Effingham on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. All right, a quick time out there when they couldn't get Taylorville to jump. It's fourth and two. Yeah, fourth and two, 38-yard line. Here's my thing. I'm looking at this sheet of Effingham runs, and they've run the ball 20 times now. On 17 of those attempts, they have gained at least two yards. So I'm thinking it would still be a good play to go for it. They've, they're still in a running formation here. So I, I would think that they're going to try it here. They're still inside Taylorville's 40 as well. So... You know, they're not giving up a lot if they don't get the first down. So fourth and two. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. Ooh. Westendorf, and he got clobbered, but look at him lean forward. It's going to be close, but he might have ended up a yard shy. And the call is made short. That'll be a first down for Taylorville. So Taylorville held. Westendorf tried to lean best he could. He needed two, and he got one. So it'll be first down for the Tornadoes. Are they going to say no game? Man, that wow. <laughs> that's not how it looked from here. But uh, at any rate, he didn't get the two he needed. I don't necessarily question that. So maybe uh, small potatoes. So first and ten, Taylorville takes over on offense at their 38-yard line. 6 nothing Effingham, 4-12 to go in the second quarter. Himes is going to drop back in the shotgun here on first down, throw across the middle, and... It is incomplete. So that'll bring up second and 10. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 4.05 left in the second quarter. In Taylorville with the ball at their own 38. Next week, the Hearts are in Mount Zion. Seven o'clock kickoff at that million dollar showcase. So far, Himes is just one for five throwing the football, so they haven't been able to get anything going with their passing game. He's back up under center here on second and ten. Rolls out, handoff up the middle. Oh, oh, holy oh. cow, what a hit. Dalton Fox knocked the ball carrier in the next week. That was a new ball carrier, too. <laughs> Seth Hughes, number 14, getting his first carry of the game, and quite a quite a rude welcome to the action as he got upended. <laughs> and a loss to boot back to the 36, Dustin, so a loss of two. So it's third and 12 now. Man, what a hit. Dalton had a real good angle. And... You add to that the fact that Hughes is not the biggest duck on the puddle. He's 5'7 and a 140. So, third and 12. Ball at Taylorville's 36. Boy, that's close to offside. Heimsness faked the play. The ball ends up staying in his hands, and the Hearts get the sack. And a couple of people in on the stop for Effingham. One's Charlie Ring, and then the other one is Cohen Woods. And it is fourth and a gain to the, now well, loss of two more. So it's fourth and 14, Dustin, at the 34. And Taylorville's going to have to punt it away. Boy, the defense has just been outstanding in this first half. Let's see about Himesness as he's back to punt. He's back near his... 25 is where he's going to let this one go. 
Long count. Long, there's the snap. Here come the Hearts. Punt is away. And the Hearts fall down. And it's Westendorf, and he has to fall on it at the 20. Man, his footing went out from under him. He might have had room to make it a nice return. As it is, he had to fall on it and save the football for Effingham. Yeah, that was a low bouncing kick, and he tried to field it on the hop, and that one got behind him a little bit. Next thing you know, he's chasing it backwards. So uh, probably a loss of three or four yards on the return there. And again, uh, close to a miscue. So pretend it was a touchback. First and 10 at the 20. That's where the Hearts will start this drive with 2.28 to go before halftime. Hearts lead it 6-0. Let's see what they can do to generate some offense here. From up under center, the handoff to the deep back. That's Westendorf, and he's out across the 25. Good gain on first down. Nice. Oh, that was, excuse me, that was uh, Keegan Baker carried that time. My apologies. And they will spot it at the 26. So a gain of six, and it's second and four. Keegan Baker carried the ball that time. He's in the tailback spot. They've been using Weymouth at the fullback spot so far tonight. Evan hasn't carried the ball yet. Oh, up the middle, Baker, great gain out across the 35-yard line, and that's plenty enough for a first down. 30-yard line, pardon me. To the 32. So from the 26, Dustin, to the 32, a gain of six. And the new set of downs here for the Hearts. And it seems like Westendorf and Baker are almost interchangeable. They're both having success carrying the football tonight. Pontia stays up under center. Here's the handoff. Up the middle, Baker does what he can to maybe get a yard. And he might have got a yard. I think they'll give him one to the 33. I want to double check the spot, though. Yeah, gain a one to the 33, so it's second and nine. Boy, the Hearts, time of possession, it has to be as astronomical. Minute 10 to go before halftime. This game is flying. Hearts lead it 6 nothing. Pontius finished with a sideline visit with Coach. And here come the Hearts. Play clock down to seven. Need to move it along here. Pontius up under center. There's the snap. Here's Baker. Great run. Right at tackle. He does not have the first down, but a good gain. Knocking on the door of the 40. From the 33, they will mark it at the 38. So a gain of five. And that'll make it third and four. Under 30 seconds, though, on the game clock now. So Effingham not too urgent here, not really trying to hustle and put any points on the board, mostly just trying to make sure they keep, uh, they don't turn it over or anything and take the lead into halftime. In fact, we might have one more play. 12 seconds on the play clock, 14 seconds on the game clock, so the Hearts will have to run one more. Pontius up under center, there's the snap, handoff, Baker up the middle, look at that hole! Keegan Baker out across midfield, that's a good way to end the first half. They're going to score it at the four, and we're out at midfield. So a gain from the 38 to midfield, gain of 12 for Baker, and that's how the first half ends up. Wow, did that half fly. And at the break, it's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing. Dustin Stats, boy, those rushing numbers ought to be eye-popping. Back with that and more here in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. This is the Compass Advisory Group Halftime Show. For all of your insurance needs, contact Corey McDaniel at 347-9697. All right, we're back at Taylorville at the half. Yeah, it's at the half, folks. It's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing. We played a half in 40 minutes. It's only 20 minutes till 8, and we're already at the break. And uh, I'll recap the scoring. Won't take long. 
Hart scored with 11.54 left in the second quarter. First play of the second quarter. Concluded a nine-play, 47-yard drive. Took 4.03 off the clock. And the highlight, John Westendorf's two-yard touchdown run. Ozzy Angels' try for one was unsuccessful. And Effingham had a 6-0 lead. And that's where it stayed for the rest of the second quarter. And the Hearts are up 6-0 here at halftime. At Taylorville, you have to go a long way to get to the locker room. So the Hearts are just out here to the opposite side of the football field. Kind of gathered out there. You know, they used to do that at, at uh, Mount Zion back in the day. And they're kind of out here in the wilderness. Kind of near where they are have their field events for their track meets so that's where they are but wherever they are they played some really good football defense was outstanding and a good running attack tonight too hearts really didn't throw the football and as a result there won't be a lot but when you're running all the time that's another reason why the game's going so quickly so already halftime and effingham in front six nothing we'll remind you again Next week, we'll be at Mount Zion for more Apollo Conference action. Kickoff at 7 o'clock, and we'll have it right here where you're listening, 97.9 XFM. Caleb's working on the scores from the area. Dustin's got all the stats. That's all on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Back at Taylorville at halftime, it's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing. And with the stats on that first half, Mr. Dustin White. Yeah, Effingham outgained Taylorville 137 to 36 wow. in the first half of play. Limited the Tornadoes to 36 yards on 18 plays from scrimmage. Effingham ran 28 plays to gain its 137 yards. And almost exclusively the yardage gained in this game by either team has been on the ground. Effingham 129 rushing yards on 26 attempts. So just a, just a hair under five yards per running attempt. You'll take that. Mm -hmm. The one score of the game also coming on the ground. Uh, for the Tornadoes, 27 rushing yards on 13 attempts. That's uh, 2.1 yards per attempt. As far as passing the ball, Effingham's only thrown it twice. Both have been successful, but for a grand total of 8 yards, Taylorville's put the ball in the air 5 times. Only one of those completed, and that was a 9-yard catch. So again, 137 to 36. Effingham with 8 first downs in the first half of play. All of those on the ground. Taylorville moved the chains twice. Once on the ground, once through the air. Turnovers, there haven't there has only been one, I should say. Effingham has fumbled the ball. They put the ball on the ground four times. Only lost one of those fumbles. Taylorville uh, had a fumble, which they did not lose. So uh, just the one Effingham turnover. Penalty is not a big part of the story either. Effingham has not been penalized yet. Taylorville was just the one uh, five-yard walk-off for uh, an illegal shift on one of their possessions. So... You know, Effingham was not penalized real heavily last week against Mattoon either, but a couple of them came at not so great times, and so uh, you'll take you'll take the discipline that it shows to not have a single infraction whistled against you in the first half. That's uh, that's pretty good. Time of possession: Effingham, 13 minutes and 12 seconds. Taylorville, 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, switching gears to some individual numbers for the Tornadoes as far as running the football goes. Uh, Cameron Himesness is. Kind of you could tell from very early in the game, he probably would be their leading rusher, and so far he is. 16 carries, or 16 yards on seven carries. Uh, Carter Ostermeyer, uh, 11 yards on four attempts. Jackson Myers, his only carry was for two yards, and then Seth Hughes only got one carry, and he zeroed that out by losing a couple of his own. Himesness, again, one for five passing. That was a nine-yarder to Joe Lyons, and that's a quick rundown of their passing game because they've only had the, the one completion. Uh, Himesness has also done the punting for Taylorville. He's uh, punted three times. An average of 35 yards per kick, but it's kind of been all over the board. He's got a 42-yarder, he's got a 36-yarder, and a 27-yarder. So it's sort of hit or miss for him. Uh, 
Hunter Gerlich with a nine yard kick return. Clark Rahar, uh, 35 yards on his kick return. That 35 yard kick return for them was the biggest play that the Tornadoes have had all evening long. It set up a bit of a shorter field, but Effingham's defense able to tighten up after that. And really, you look at those numbers, and Effingham's defense has done a great job tonight. You know, they've really owned the middle of the field, I think. They have not allowed the Tornadoes to move the football on the ground. And then, meanwhile, you talk about that middle of the field, then when Effingham's got the football, well, they have controlled it there, too, because they are running the ball with ease. John Westendorf, 56 yards on 13 carries, including a two-yard touchdown run, the only score of the game. And Keegan Baker, right behind him, in fact, averaging more yardage per carry. He's got 53 yards on 10 carries, so he's three yards behind John as far as total yards, but uh, also did it in three fewer carries. And then Tanner Pontius, 20 yards on three rushing attempts. I would say that only one of those rushing attempts was actually by design. A couple of them were plays where they dropped back to pass and he felt the pressure and stepped up and ran and got some good gains, 11 yards and 8 yards out of those plays. So Tanner has made some good decisions as well. Uh, you like to see that. He hasn't had to throw the ball very much. He's only put it in the air twice. Both of those receptions belong to Armando Estrada. Uh, 6 yards, 2 yards, a total of 8. So not much in the passing game there, but when you're running the ball as well as Effingham is, why would you why would you bother throwing it, right? Uh, they haven't needed to, and that's the way it's been going. So as a result, uh, Tanner Pontius has not punted yet in this game. Effingham has uh, had a couple of punt returns. John Westendorf, two punt returns for a total of five yards, so not much room there. And again, that's it. Uh, you know, not not a whole lot of numbers to pass along when it's a six nothing game at halftime. But you know, this one's moving right along. Uh, just a really quick first half. And Effingham, again, interior line play, as good as we've seen all season long. They are really, really uh, working well. I think you even go to Charleston where Effingham won that game by a sizable margin. But I would dare say that Effingham physically has controlled this game more at the, tw at the 24 minute mark than they did even up at Trojan Hill a couple, three weeks ago. It's been a dominating performance, absolutely. Thank you, Dustin. At halftime here at Taylorville, it's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing. Let's take a break. Caleb will look at the scores for us in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Back at Taylorville at the half, it's Effingham 6, Taylorville nothing. Speaking of scores, Caleb Moody, what do you have for us? All right, thank you very much, Greg. Currently in the second quarter, it is Muhammad Seymour over Charleston 14-3. Also into the second quarter, it is Mattoon and Collinsville currently tied at 8. Also in the second quarter, Johnson City and Floor are tied at 0. Into the second quarter, it is Cumberland and Villagrove, or it is Cumberland over Villagrove, Villagrove Heritage 20 to 0. It is Shelbyville currently leading Warrensburg Latham 7 to nothing and Mount Zion currently holds the lead over Lincoln in the second quarter 12 to 6. Taking a look at some MLB scores. Currently in the middle of the sixth, it is the Orioles over the Rangers 4-3. The Nationals are currently beating the Reds in the mid of the fifth inning 4-2. It is currently the Yankees over the Red Sox 7-0. And in the second game, in the top of the second, it is currently the Cardinals leading the Cubs 6-2. And that's the scores I have, gentlemen. Good. Thank you very much. We'll remind you that we will have NASCAR Saturday night and Sunday night. They're in Las Vegas this weekend, so our coverage on the Saturday night event will be at 7 o'clock. Excuse me, 6 o'clock on Saturday night. It's at 5 o'clock on Sunday. And because of that 5 o'clock start on Sunday, we're going to move American Country Countdown with Kicks Brooks. That can be heard at noon on Sunday. And then we'll have the race at 5 on Sunday, so please make note of that. And we have high school baseball for you Monday. We're back at Totopolis. It'll be Dietrich at T-Town, 4.30 game on that one. And we're in the works to get that 
game between Windsor's two straws and Totopolis on the radio. It has been rescheduled for Wednesday afternoon, and so we think we can broadcast that. Dustin White is up to the challenge, so we have him on board. And if we think we need someone else, we'll find him. You know, I, I don't want to blow my own horn too much, but uh, you know, I'll get on there and I'll get on there and do it myself if I have to. I'd love to. I'd love to have an assist, but uh, uh, if there's if there's one sport that I feel like I might be able to still make it uh, make it happen, that would be it. But yeah, if anybody else wants to jump in there, that'd be that'd be fine. It should be that should be a good one. Uh, so if we can get on the air, we ought to. I know we did Windsor's Two Straws in T Town last year. Guys, you always have to check in these COVID days. It was last year when we did the game up at Stu. Fun ball game. Uh, T-Town got the lead. The Hatchets came back and won that game. That was a lot of fun. I think it was you and me. The only thing that I... I mean, it's not like it's a new thing that they're the hatchets, but there's, depending on at least the games in T-Town, because if it was being played at either Windsor or Stewart's and Strasburg, then I would probably have to fight the urge to call them either the Comets or the Blue Devils, depending on what <laughs> depending on what high school we were at. Like, that, that one's still, uh, you know, it takes it takes an older brain to, a little while to, to catch up to things sometimes. Amen, so. brother. <laughs> Boy, don't, you, you don't know the app of that. Well. Uh, I'm getting there. Man, oh, man. We're about ready for the second half. We will say again that next week, Effingham's at Mount Zion. That's why I was so interested in that score. Mount Zion and Drenna Lincoln, 12-6 at halftime. Yeah, Lincoln, I mean, Lincoln giving them all they want. Lincoln's been giving people all they want all season long. And so, you know, if you're looking ahead to that Lincoln home game, you know, two weeks from tonight and saying, oh, we're going to get these guys. We always beat Lincoln. Well, don't. Don't get. Uh, I'm. I'm not saying Effingham won't beat them. All I'm saying is you better not take it for granted. And I. You, I guarantee you the kids in the white jerseys out there getting stretched out before the second half of this game tonight are not going to be allowed to take it for granted. Because Coach, Coach Hefner sees the scores, and I'm sure he's probably seen some tape at this point, mm. and he's telling them this is not. Uh, this is not your. Uh, this is not your older brother's Lincoln team. It was a case where I saw the hard schedule this year, and I went gulp. Mm -hmm. It's a tough schedule. Highland is a perennial power. Breeze Modern Day, well, what do you need to say? If you've seen their games with the Hearts the last 10, 15 years, you know how that goes. It's always tough. And then the conference is always a handful. So you know, and, it, it's interesting. And, you know, for holding Taylorville to 36 yards in the first half here, I mean, this game's – this game is, of course, anybody's ball game because Effingham's only scored the one touchdown. They are going to get the ball first here in the second half, and it would really, it would really behoove them to have a nice drive and put some points on the board just to create a little separation. Because as it is, I mean, Tornadoes are one big play away from taking the lead in this football game right now, and guarantee their coaching staff is paying attention to how they're being defended and trying to find that that one weakness, that one thing that they can exploit and see if they can get that big play and get out in front. So so the Hearts need to uh, need to really make something out of this opening drive, I think. If if not a score, at least move the ball and get, uh, get that field position pushed back. Well, you're right about big plays. Dustin and I have done football together a long time. Mark and I did for a lot of years, of course, Larry and I forever, and Larry is probably sitting at home saying, yeah, he remembers some of those games where there'd be some Taylorville quarterback yeah. and he'd throw about a 72-yard touchdown yeah. pass, and that would decide the game. I mean, we've seen, we have seen games here on this field in the past where, you know, the they just be throwing it, slinging it all over the field, and and if you're if you just have a breakdown in coverage, you know, next thing you know, you you look around and, and teams put two three scores on the board before you even have time to realize what's going on. Now I, I'm not exactly sure that this Taylorville team is going to do that. It's shown no signs that Effingham is going to let them do it so far, but they're well coached and and I they're going to have something, so. All I'm saying is this first possession for Effingham is an important one. Do want to mention, I saw the Taylorville band out there. That reminded me of the Effingham Hearts Red Regiment. They are at Eastern mm -hmm. tomorrow for their big band festival. Spent a lot of time at work today getting stuff on the Panther Marching Band's website about that competition. Uh, took up a little bit more of my day than I actually thought it was going to. So best of success to the Red Regiment. Here's the kickoff to start the second half. It's a pretty short kick. It was grabbed by Connor Thompson, but he couldn't field it, so 
Effingham had Westendorf come up. He fielded it, and he lands at the 30, and that's where Effingham will start the second half. He'll that was pop, scary. He'll pop up kick, and uh, you're right, Thompson trying to field it over his shoulder, as it turns out. Westendorf, though, Johnny on the spot, able to, to get on it and get a little bit of a return. So not bad. First and 10, Effingham at their own 30. Again, it's 6 nothing Effingham. They had the one touchdown just barely into the second quarter, missed the extra point, so it's 6 nothing Hearts. Tanner Pontius has been up under center just about the entire game, and that's where he is here. Here's the handoff coming to the near side. Westendorf, big gain out to the five, so they get half that first down they need on the first carry. First, second and five at the 35. And a Taylorville player still on the turf. Trainer Troy is out to take a look at him. And they're waiting on the Taylorville crew to come over and help out. Trainer Troy, valuable, valuable resource. Or as I could call him, Finn's dad. Pretty proud of that little boy. So now the Taylorville trainer's out. I haven't been able to see a number, Dustin. Nope. Shielded off from us, from the Effingham personnel that got to, to the scene pretty quickly as this happened near the Hearts sideline. Uh, Taylorville, not a deep team. So we'll see who, see who it is, but there's a fairly decent chance that if they're on the field, there's probably somebody who plays a vital role for them because they just do not have the numbers. Again, 33 people on their varsity roster. Uh, they don't have the numbers to to, to have, you know, right. just just some special teams guy that only plays on kickoffs and isn't out there for uh, isn't out there for any of the other stuff. We can see the young man moving everything. I'm always glad about that, and always try to share that first thing. See feet moving, legs moving, arms moving. So that's always the first thing I worry about. And so that's good. He's still on his back, though, and they haven't moved him at all. So let's see if we might see a stretcher, or he's starting to act like he might want to get up. And they are going to get him up, and that's really good news. He's back on his feet. Number three, Colin Albright, a junior wide receiver in DB. And he's able to walk off the field under his own power. That is really good news. So they took that extra measure of time to make sure everything was all right, and thankfully it was. So Westendorf gained five on the play, so it's second and five for the Hearts at their own 35-yard line. We are already into the second half, gang. That is unheard of. That injury is the only thing that's kept this, that <laughs> slowed this game down, any. 97.9 XFM, WXEF and Effingham. It's 8 o'clock, and we're in the third quarter. All right, second and five for the Hearts at their 35. Tanner Pontius turns around and is checking the sidelines. Now we're good. And he's up under center. Bring a man from the near from the far side closer. Westendorf the handoff. He got a couple. He hardly ever gets just stood up. Didn't get as much as he'd want. Oh, I tell you what, that was Weymouth. That's Evan Weymouth that carried that time. Number 45 for the Hearts. And it's a gain out to the 37. So he gets two. And that'll make it third and three. So Evan Weymouth carried the ball. I told you he'd, they'd been running him at fullback, but he'd been blocking up until now. So giving him a different look. So third and three, and Tanner Pontius just bowls forward out across the 40, and he got the first down. Yeah, they're going to, looking at the side judge, it's not even going to be close. Uh, plenty of plenty enough yardage to get that first down. I'll call it the 41, so that's a gain of four. And the new set of downs for the Hearts. 10.55 remaining in the third quarter. It's 6 nothing Effingham. And that's the one thing that nags at you, and Dustin talked about it at halftime, that it's only 6 to nothing. Boy, you'd love to get another score on the board. They are huddling up now. Now there's a Taylorville player, 72, Aaron Corso, one of their defensive linemen hobbling off the field there. Looks like he's having a little trouble putting weight on his left leg as he made his way off to the sideline. So in the span of three plays, uh, two Taylorville guys getting shaken up. Went out of bounds right about midfield. So it's 40, the 41-yard line where the Hearts set it up. They're going to throw. Pontius across the middle. Got a man. That's Estrada. Got it. him. See ya. Touchdown, Effingham. Armando Estrada. 59 yards. What a beauty. What a beautiful pass from Pontius. And he got down there and did the jump. 
to make sure that he knew Estrada, he, that he was happy with him, and Estrada was happy with the war. What a grab. Well, Estrada, it's, I mean, just beat his man and got way behind him. All that mattered was that uh, Pontius put it in a spot where Estrada could go get it. Easy, uh, easy enough. 59-yard touchdown. That's what the hearts needed. That's on me because I didn't ask for that touchdown. I said, boy, I wish we had another touchdown. Bam. Estrada tries the extra point. He left-footed it somewhere over near Pena. That's good. Plenty good. Hearts lead it 13 nothing. 10.26 to go. Third quarterback with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota. Located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. Estrada with a kickoff after he scored the touchdown and he got the extra point. And Taylorville goes back into the end zone. And that's a touchback. That'll bring the football back out to the 20. That's where Taylorville will set up shop. I'm not sure their return man knew that he'd been driven back into the end zone. Yeah, he was a little frustrated, but uh, the call is what it is. And uh, definitely, definitely did chase him back over the goal line. So a touchback and a long field for the Tornadoes coming up. Dustin tells me that drive was four plays, 70 yards, took a minute 34 off the clock, highlighted by a pretty pass. From Pontius to Estrada, 59 yards. And then Estrada's kick was good, and the Hearts have extended the lead to 13 to nothing with 10-25 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 for Taylorville at their 20. And they have been somewhat limited offensively. There's the snap, and Heimsness keeps, and he goes to the far side, and he's still on his feet, and he gets out across the 25-yard line. Nice gain on first down. A host of hearts tacklers, as we often say when we're trying to figure out who it was. And it was led by Maddox Burner. He was in on that stop for the hearts. The gain from the 20 to the 26. Gain of six, Dustin. It's second and four. Next week, the hearts at Mount Zion. Six. Almost as many yards as Taylorville's ever been able to pick up on any one running play tonight. Been a dominating performance by the Hearts defense. Heimsness up under center. He fakes the handoff, goes to the far side, still on his feet, and he might have the first down and then some. He's out across the 35-yard line. And nice containment in the middle by Taylorville's line. And Heimsness went to the far side, and they'll sit right on the 35, Dustin. So a gain of nine on that play. And a new set of downs for the Tornadoes. And that is their biggest running play of the game. So Heimsness able to find a little more space on those first two carries. Remember, they rushed for a grand total of 27 yards on 13 carries in the first half. Well, Cameron Heimsness, 15 yards on his first two runs here after the break. First and 10 for Taylorville at their 35. And Heimsness just goes straight up the middle like he was trying to get a first down. And I guess he was. They've done that on first down a couple of times tonight. I don't know if they're trying to catch Effingham off guard, but uh, for the second time, it really only works for, I don't know, a couple of yards. I think they'll set it down at the 37. Yeah, and it's second and eight. Gain of two there. 8.48 to go on the third. Yeah, we're moving right along here, gang. 13 nothing Effingham. Gosh, that second touchdown, Dustin, gives you a lot feeling of security, I guess. We'll see what happens here. Margin for error more than anything. You make one mistake and you aren't behind. Exactly so. They run it up the middle. Heimsness faked the handoff and he's still on his feet and he dives near the 40. I want to see the spot. I've got my side judge out here at the 39. And that's where they'll sit it down. So again, a two out of all that. And it's third and six. So third and six for Taylorville. Still not across midfield, so you would think that if you could stop them short here, depending on how much they have left to go, they might have to think about punting the ball away, but uh, we're, we're a little ways from that decision yet. 
Heimsness goes back to the shotgun, looking to throw, goes to the far sideline. The ball's knocked loose. Ozzy Angel knocked that ball down. Incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. It felt like Heimsness got rid of that ball too early. I'm not sure, but it uh, seemed like he threw that one a little sooner than he needed to or the sooner than his receiver was ready for, to be sure. Maybe feeling some pressure in the backfield, mm -hmm. but uh, it does appear that maybe a punt formation coming up for the Tornadoes. So it's fourth and six. They're at their own 39. Heimsness back to punt. He's inside his own 30 as he sets up here. There's the snap. Here's the kick. He got it away. Left-footed kick. It lands at the Hearts 40. The Hearts get it on the bounce. That's Westendorf. Look at him go. He brings it back into Taylorville territory. It'll be first and 10 for Effingham at Taylorville's 48-yard line. Yeah, it took that one about uh, about 20 yards. Uh, well, 18 yards, as a matter of fact, on the return. So not a real deep punt. And then a good return for Westendorf and short field position for the Hearts. Man, they could... They could really make some hay here. Again, they set up the drive in Taylorville territory. 7.36 left in the third quarter as Effingham starts this drive. Effingham leads 13-0. Pontius stays up under center. That's worked really well. Rolls, he's going to throw, steps up past the defense. He's got a man there. That's Caden Walls, and it's just overthrown. It ends up incomplete. Yeah, just led him a little bit too far. I, I think, I mean, honestly, Walls had the inside position. He turned into the middle of the field and I think had the position on his, uh, his man. It was uh, single coverage. If the throw's there, then I think that's a catchable, a makeable play, but the throw just led him a little bit too far. I think you'll agree that the Hearts may file that away for future reference and come back to that a little later. First time that uh, Pontius has gone incomplete on a pass. He's three for four now. Stops the clock with 7.28 to go in the third, and it's second and 10 at Taylorville's 48 for Effingham. Pontius from the shotgun. They send Weymouth to that left tight end spot. They hand it to Baker, and boy there. I guess it wasn't Baker. He faked me. And the gain ends up to the 45. So gain of three. So the gain is to three to the 45, and I apologize. I thought, sure, that was Baker, and it was Westendorf that carried to the 45, so it's third and seven. Handoff up the middle, huge hole for Baker. Keegan gets it inside the 40-yard line, very near a first down. Yeah, it's going to be close. I think they're going to say yes. They're going to say go ahead and give it to him. Gain to the 38, Dustin, a gain of seven. And they had third and seven on the board. So first down for Effingham, new set of downs. 6.40 left in the third quarter as this game continues to fly by. Hearts in front here, 13 to nothing. Pontius up under center on first and 10. Looking to throw, checks off, throws it. It's short. Boy, had to really get rid of it in a hurry. Weymouth was in the intended receiver out here in the flats. And Pontius just about to eat his, got his yeah, lunch eat. I was going to say is probably either throw it right then off the wrong foot or have your... Uh, have your mouth guard shoved down your throat. And so he decided to go ahead and get rid of the football, and that was the smart decision. Stops the clock with 6.25, the incomplete pass. It's second and 10. Hearts with the ball at Taylorville's 38-yard line. Handoff this time. Baker, look at them move him. And he gets it inside or at least to the 35-yard line. Look at the guys that are out front, and I should give them some credit, shouldn't I? Let me give shout outs to a couple of guys on the right side of that line if they can clear up for me. One guy out top is Kobe Coburn and then Logan Heil. And those two guys doing a heck of a job on the right side of the line. As it is, it's a gain to the 35. So a gain of three. And it's third and seven. Third and seven. There's the snap, handoff, Baker. They've got a hold of him. He still dives forward at least back to the line of scrimmage. He's at the 35 and no gain is the call. So it's fourth and seven, Dustin. I thought he got a little bit on that one, to be honest with you. I thought that he had already crossed the 35, crossed the line of scrimmage when somebody pulled him down from behind. But as it is, no gain. So fourth and seven here, but 
At the Taylorville 35, you're going to see Effingham's offensive personnel stay on the field. Fourth and seven, 35-yard line. Hearts lead 13-0. Be great to keep this drive going. From the shotgun, Pontius has time. Coming to the near side, now doesn't have time. Now tucks it in. Bows back to the middle of the field. Lost his footing, but gets near the 25-yard oh. line. I think he got the first down. I think he did, too. They haven't. They haven't made the signal yet, but boy, he made something out of nothing there. They're going to set it down at the 28, and that should be plenty enough for a first down. How about that run? He came to the near sideline, was going to throw, tucked <laughs> it in, turned it back to the middle of the field, and got it to the 28-yard line. Yeah, it's just another play where he didn't have anybody to throw to and decided to just tuck and run and really made a great play out of it. First and 10 at Taylorville's 28. Again, he lost his footing. He eluded one tackler, got it back to near the line of scrimmage. That kind of looked to me like maybe somebody that he wanted to hand it to wasn't where they were supposed to be there because he almost seemed like he lost his balance looking for somebody to hand it to, realized they weren't there just about touched his knee to the turf but then kept his feet underneath him as it is though still a loss yeah lost a yard to the 29 so it's second and 11. four minutes left in the third quarter hearts lead at 13 nothing potty is from the shotgun got a man in motion there's the handoff that's westendorf turns it up to the middle of the field gets to maybe the 20 Seven or so. We'll double check here. That's. Uh, I think that might have been Estrada that carried the ball. It was Estrada coming from the end spot. To, uh, came across for a little sweet play there. Got two from the 29 to the 27. So Armando Estrada. That makes it third and ten. I'm guessing the Hearts are throwing the ball here. Westendorf back. Baker out. So that gives the Hearts a little more muscle. Third and 10 at Taylorville's 27. So obviously a two down situation here. They bring Estrada across the middle. They're gonna throw, they got a man. There's Weymouth, touchdown Effingham. Kind of a late hit after that play too, but you'll take it. Evan Weymouth, what a pretty pass. You could just see him almost aim that throw. And I mean that in every complimentary sense of the word. Beautiful pass from Tanner Pontius to Evan Weymouth for the score. Yep. And the Hearts extend the lead to 19 to nothing. 27-yard touchdown pass. So the Hearts haven't put the ball in the air a whole lot, but uh, they've been effective. Four for six passing for Pontius, 94 yards, and now two scores. Ozzie Angel to try the extra point. There's the placement. The kicks up looks good to me, and the officials agree. And it's 20 to nothing, Effingham. 3.13 left in the third quarter. Kickoff on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. All right, we'll talk about the drive in a minute. Armando Estrada ready with a kickoff as the Hearts have extended the lead to 20 to nothing. Deep kick. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Boy, Estrada's feeling his oats, Dustin. Yeah, the first one kind of carried the receiver over the goal line as he caught it. This time the kick returned, didn't even have a chance. That ball was that ball landed a good step and a half into the end zone, and so it's two straight touchbacks. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20 for Taylorville with 3.13 left in the third quarter. Effingham has extended the lead to 20 to nothing. Hearts a 10 play, 48 yard drive to 4.23 off the clock. Highlighted by a pretty pass from Tanner Pontius to Evan Weyman. Kick by Ozzy Angel was good and it's 20 to nothing Hearts. Let's see what Heimsness tries here for Taylorville on first and 10 at their own 20. There's the snap. He's going to throw across the middle. It is caught. Heck of a grab. Yeah. Out across the 40-yard line. Nice play and a great catch by Jaden Mathon. Jaden Mathon, M-A-T-H-O-N, for Taylorville. They say incomplete. 
Oh, I my thought he caught goodness, it. Goodness, I do too. It was a great effort. I thought he caught that ball, Greg. Boy, we had a great look at it, Dustin. Well, I won't complain too much, but man. There was an official pretty close to the play, too. They needed that in the worst way, and they don't get it. So now second and ten. Oh, my goodness. Clock stops with 3.05 on the incompletion, and now it's second and ten. Boy, that looked like a heck of a catch. Here's the snap. They're going to throw again. Going deep. They've got a man there. Knocked down. Nice defense by the Hearts. Yep, that's uh, right there was uh, Damon Calber in one-on-one -on -one coverage with, I think, Joe Lyons yes. for the Tornadoes and just batted that ball away down the sideline here. So that brings up a third and ten. Heck of a play. I didn't ever see him grab the receiver. I just saw him get inside him and knock that ball away. Yeah, Taylorville just one for eight passing now. Clock stops with 2.59 left in the third. Brings up a third and ten. They are still at their 20-yard line. Yeah, they almost have to throw it here, you would think, unless they call Himesness's number on some sort of misdirection here. 20 to nothing Effingham now. It's been a productive third quarter. Himesness from the shotgun looking to throw across the middle. It is caught and dropped. That'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's uh, the intended receiver there, Seth Hughes, and that ball was in the hands. I might have been a touch behind him, but mm -hmm. looked to be fairly catchable. And so Taylorville recognizing they got to start putting the ball in the air if they want to catch up, and they're rewarded with three straight incompletions, and now they got no choice but to punt. They're on their own 20. Fourth and 10 at their 20. Three incomplete passes on that series, and now the punt. Heimsness gets it away low, and somebody might have got a hand on that, but it's still going to get a pretty good Taylorville roll. It's inside the Hearts 45-yard line. But once again, Dustin, the Hearts are going to have really good field position to start a drive. Yep, they're going to be on their own 44, it looks like, and so... You'll take that. It's a, it's a decent punt. That's a 36-yard mm -hmm. punt for uh, Himesness. But he's had to punt five times now. And uh, Taylorville already trailing by 20 points. You put together, you just take, I mean, you run this thing into the fourth quarter, you score or not, you're really putting them behind the eight ball. So the Hearts from their own 43. Series starts with 245 left in the third quarter. Up under center, Pontius looking to throw. Has time, now rolls to the far side of the field. Still on his feet. They've got him though and they take him down at about the 43. So nothing developed and they sack Pontius for a three yard loss. Three yard loss. And that will put it at the 43 yard line. I'll double check my just a loss of one then loss of one I'm I think sorry PA That's announcer right. got a little excited drive started at the 44 now it's the 43 so it's second and 11 Pontius up under center handoff up the gut nice run there's Westendorf still on his feet into Taylorville territory goes down at about the tornado 48 and even the man who brings him down and that was Luke Durbin who ended up tackling him Gets the worst of it by the time it's all said and done. Westendorf just rolls right over them. They get it into Taylorville territory on the 49-yard line. So gain of eight from the 43 to the 49 of the Tornadoes. Minute 40 left in the third quarter. And the other thing you can't forget, the clock keeps running as the hearts keep moving. Westendorf got hit, still dives forward for a couple of yards. I think they'll give him to the 47, gain of two. I think he got two, and he probably needed three to move the chains. So it's fourth and one. Fourth and one for Effingham at Taylorville's 47-yard line, and of course they're going to go for it. They're up 20 to nothing, and they've been rolling all night. Yep. Just outside a minute to go in the third quarter. Pontius stays up under center. He may just keep it. Nope. Handoff. Westendorf picks his way through. He's on his horse. He gets it near the 35-yard line. First down, Hart. It didn't look like he had a whole lot of room there at first. It looked like he was going to be fortunate just to get the yard that he needed to convert that fourth down. And then all of a sudden, the flood, the, the, the seas parted. <laughs> there was all kinds of room in front of him, and he was gaining 11 yards. From the 47 to the 36. First down, Hearts. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Pontius up under center, dropped the football, gets it back, gets away. Now they're after him. He gets it near the 40, throws the football, and it goes incomplete. Yikes. Well, getting rid of and it. a flag. 
getting rid of it was better than taking a sack, I guess, as long as you could be ensured that nobody was going to pick it off. But then it isn't going to matter because, yeah, there was a hold uh, going on in the backfield after the snap hit the turf. Flags thrown right about the 40-yard line. Penalties on the hearts and a very rare penalty in this football game. So that'll bring it 10, and it should end up right about midfield. Yep, that's right where they'll sit it down. So from the 36, the Hearts lose 14 yards on that play. Yeah, so instead of an incomplete pass, it's a loss of four yards for Pontius on his numbers and then 10 yards on the first Effingham penalty of the evening. So first and 24 for the Hearts now. Let's see if we've got a bomb to the end zone here. 33 seconds left, third quarter. Hearts are in front, 20 to nothing here at Taylorville. Pontius from the shotgun. Weymouth in motion. Here's the handoff. No, he keeps it. Pontius inside the 45, still on his feet to the 43. A nice game there. Yeah, Effingham kind of showing Taylorville what it likes to do uh, there as they fake the handoff to the back, and then the quarterback ends up keeping it up through the middle and made a pretty nice little play out of it. Got six yards. To the 44 of Taylorville, and that should be the final play of the third quarter. After three here at Taylorville, it's Effingham 20, Taylorville nothing. Fourth quarter on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. We head to the fourth quarter. We're at Taylorville. Yeah, I know. We're already heading to the fourth quarter. It's 20 to nothing Effingham, and it's almost entirely been a ground game. That's why we're at 826 and heading for the fourth quarter. Yeah, Effingham has played extremely well. They've moved the football. Uh, they've played really strong defense. They've controlled the middle of the field on both sides. And that's why they are where they are. They're in the catbird seat. They just got to finish this one off. Second and 18. Still have a way to go to get the first down. Here's the handoff up the middle. Nice block, and Westendorf gets it inside the 40. So a pretty good game. And they just keep getting chunks of yardage and keep that clock rolling. I think at this point that's the main thing, whether you end up hunting the ball away here or giving it up on downs, I guess, since you're in Taylorville territory. You know, you just keep running the ball, keep taking that time off the clock, just a four-yard gain there for Westendorf. But, again, by the time it's all said and done, another, you know, 40 seconds come off the clock. So it's third and 14. Effingham with the ball at Taylorville's 40. From the shotgun, Pontius. Rolling to the near side, has some time. There's the throw, it is caught. Nice job as he's diving to the turf. Great catch by Caden Walls. And let me tell you something, two Taylorville players collided in the backfield and essentially blocked each other on that, giving uh, Tanner Pontius all the time he needed to make a very good throw. That's a 15 yard pickup. Mm, exactly, 15 from the 40 to the 25. And that's enough for a first down. They needed 14, got 15. So first and 10 for the Hearts at Taylorville's 25 with 11 minutes to go on this one. Westendorf is loose. He may go all the way. Five dives near the end zone. There it is. Touchdown Effingham. Waited for the indicator. Dove across the pylon. Touchdown Hearts. They extend the lead to 26 to nothing on a 25-yard run by John Westendorf. The score comes with 10.48 left in the game. His second rushing touchdown of the game, and that puts him over the century mark, 111 yards on 19 carries. So Effingham really in control now. Zach Donaldson to hold for Armando Estrada. There's the kick. It's up, and it's good. Hearts 27, Taylorville nothing. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehab to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. 
purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. John Westendorf, 25-yard touchdown run. Kick by Estrada, good. Hearts lead 27-0. Here's the kickoff, and Taylorville returns it from the 10. They come to the far side of the field, and Keegan Baker says, let's play football. Yeah, he says, hey, uh, Clark Rayar, you get to return this one. No touchback this time, but I'm going to go ahead and blow you up at the 25-yard line. Keegan plays a little defense, too. Holy cow. So Taylorville will get it. Uh, will get it at their own 25-yard line. That's where they'll set it up first and 10 with 10:42 left in the game. Hearts in front now, 27 to nothing. That was a nine-play, 56-yard drive. Took 357. Highlighted by the Westendorf 25-yard touchdown run. Kicked by Estrada. Good. 27 nothing. Effingham. Man oh man, it was six to nothing at halftime. They come on the end around. They come to the near side of the field. Boy, some good blocking. Taylorville runner is loose. He's to his own 40, and the Hearts finally catch up with him about the 35. Otherwise, he was in for a score. Yeah, Seth Hughes on the afternoon. Taylorville going with a little bit of the trick play there, or at least uh, something a little fancier than what we've seen out mm -hmm. of them all evening, and they reversed the field all the way to the 35, so that's a 40-yard pickup for Hughes. Damon Calber and Dalton Fox among them in on the stop for Effingham. It's a gain to the 35. So from the 25 of Taylorville to the 35 of Effingham. About doubled their rushing output in the game on one fell swoop. But uh, again, Effingham with a 27-point lead. You can afford that. 40-yard gain on that play. From the shotgun, Heimsness looking to throw. Here come the Hearts. Oh, Heil lost his footing. Otherwise, he had him. There's a throw. And what a it catch. Is caught. Is he going to give him the touchdown? Yes. It was right at the goal line, and he calls it touchdown. The official was right on the goal line to make the call. The catch is good by number 10, Jaden Mathan. That makes it 27 to 6. So those extra points pretty big. That makes it 27 to 6 as Mathan makes the catch. 35 yarder. So Taylorville's on the board with 9.57 left in the game. They'll try to kick for one. And that's Hymas as well. Talk about a guy who does it all. There's the snap. There's the placement. There's the kick. And it looked good, and it is good. 27-7. Taylorville's on the board. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever, Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Well, Taylorville got on the board in a hurry. Score came on a 25-35 yard pass completion. Kick was good. Mathon, the touchdown catch. And Heimsness got the extra point and they try a squib kick and the hearts end up with it, I think, because I don't think yep. it went 10 yards. Well, maybe it did. Dalton, it? Dalton Fox is the guy who came up with it. Yeah, they tried to go onside with that one and Fox was able to corral it. And uh, looks like right at about the 45-yard line is where he ended up with it. So Taylorville tries, but uh, Effingham's going to have the football. Obviously, Taylorville has to have the ball, even with that touchdown. They're still down 27-7, to and there's only 9.52 left in the game. But the Hearts, once again, Dustin, have great field position. Yeah, actually the 47-yard line, so only a 13-yard kick there. And the Hearts will take their sweet time, I'm guessing, here. That ground game's worked pretty well. That'd be just what the doctor orders. There's the handoff up the gut. Keegan Baker got to midfield, and then they pull him back, and then he goes back to midfield. That's where they'll spot it. So from the 47 to the 50, again, a three in its second and seven. And a Hearts will be glad to let the clock run this whole 
seconds before they have to get another playoff. 9.25 left. Keegan up to 69 yards on 15 carries and 111 for John Westendorf on 19. 27-7 the score. Here's the handoff. Up the gut. Baker got it to the 45. Gain of five. Tell you what, you gain five yards pop, you're going to be all right. Yeah, that'll work. About uh, a couple, three yards short still. Two yards short, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Third and two is what they're showing on the board. Right at the 45. 8.54 remaining in the game. Here's the handoff. Baker got mm -hmm. spun, dove forward, got it to the 44. So it's still going to leave him a little shy of a first down. He got a yard to the 44. Yep, so... So fourth down and eh, long one. Interesting decision to make here. Taylorville just scored in a real hurry, but you're still ahead of them by almost by, by three scores, but it looks like Effingham is going to run their offense here. Let's see Pontius, and they do. They gave it to Pontius, and look, he's still on his feet. He gets <laughs> it into the 35-yard line. I think he had, he almost <laughs> just kind of fell. He just kept falling forward. I don't think he realized, expected to have as much room to run as he did, so that'll, that'll work. That's a first down and all the way to the 35-yard line. So he needed one, and he got nine. From the 44 to the 35, and the Arts have a new set of downs with eight minutes left in this game. And every first down that Effingham gets just makes it exponentially more difficult for Taylorville to come back no matter how many big plays they're able to string together. Body stays under center. There's the snap handoff to Baker. Keegan, a big hole right side of center, and he gets another five yards near the 30. At this point, just take care of the football. You know, ball security was a bit of an issue last week, and it was even in the first half of this game. They've taken good care of it so far here. Just don't... Uh, uh, don't give him anything easy. They gave him four to the 31 at second and six. And the Hearts just being steady Eddie here. Yep. We're down to 725 left in the game. Hearts lead it 27 to seven. One blip was that big end around and then a touchdown pass. There's a handoff, Baker. Keep going, got it inside the 30. Now they drive him back and there is a late flag. Wait. Somebody, that flag came in from a long way away. Saw something, though. From outside the play, well downfield, in fact. I'm going to check this one out. Maybe on Taylorville. Taylorville grabbed a Hart's face mask. So that's a personal foul. But it must have been inadvertent. They only move it five yards. So it advances it to the 24. So that play all started at the 31. So seven yards, so he got two yards on the play, Dustin, and mm -hmm. then the five yard inadvertent face mask. So it's to the 24, and it's first and 10 Effingham. Pontius stays up under center. Strata from the near side moves closer to the middle. Baker still on his feet. He Balls gets, out, yeah, balls out. He got near the 20. Taylorville says they have it. Of course they do. Yeah. And Taylorville does end up with the football. It's the one thing you can't do. Keegan Baker trying for an extra yard and lost the ball. So the Tornadoes take over possession with 640 remaining. The Hearts lead it 27 to 7. You know, this is a big series and a big lesson for tonight, but also for the rest of the season. If you want to get some success going, you got to protect the football if you get the lead. So it's at the 21. So he got three before the fumble. So first and 10 for Tornadoes at their 21. The drive starts with 640 remaining. The Hearts in front, 27 to seven. There's the snap, Heimsness wants to throw. The Hearts are after him and he's still on his feet and he gets the pass oh, no. away and he's got a man all alone and he caught it. And let's see if the Hearts can catch him, yes. About the 18 yard line, maybe the 17. But when Heimsness, who should have been dead to rights, got away, then he had room to throw. The Taylorville receiver was like three steps ahead of the Hearts defenders, and he made the catch, and they'll sit it down at Effingham's 17-yard line. That's 29 and 33, a 62-yard pass play. Holy moly. 
So first and 10 at Effingham, 17. 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. A handoff, and he gets it inside the 20. That's Ostermeyer. And Carter Ostermeyer lost yardage, actually, on the play. The ball was at the 17, and they move it back to the 18, so it's second and 11. So that didn't work out for the Tornadoes. Second and 11 now. Taylorville with the ball at Effingham's 18. 540 to go. Hearts lead it by 20. But you don't like the way this one's turned. They fake the throw. Heimsness lets it go. He's got a man, but he's out of bounds. And the pass is incomplete. That'll bring up third and 11. Yeah, I think even if the intended receiver was able to haul that one in, he was out of bounds in the corner of the end zone there anyway. So Effingham able to get a couple of good defensive plays here and get their sea legs back underneath them a little bit. They were kind of reeling, I think, for a moment there. I agree with you. Third and 11. Ball's at the 18. Clock does stop on the incompletion and the out of bounds. Incompletion. It's 531 remaining. Third and 11. Taylorville desperately needing a first down. They fake the handoff. The Hearts blitz. There's the pass. It is caught for a touchdown. And there's a late flag. Let's see what that's about. Pass play right across the middle. And second game of the second time tonight. That's Jaden Mathon. Mathon. Let's wait and, that, and see. Let's see who the penalty's on. And Taylorville's body language is telling you they got, yeah, it's against the Tornadoes, so take that one off the board. Flag is thrown at the 14. Let's see what they call here. They're going to step it off from the 15. It's a hold, and that'll bring the football back. No, it's to the 23. So the line of scrimmage was the 18, so it's a minor infraction. Although, how can it be minor when it takes away a touchdown off the board? So it's third and 16. The ball's at the 23. There's 526 remaining. They never did indicate, did they, Dustin, what the penalty was? I was busy writing. <laughs> so, ball's at the 23, third and 16. Looking to throw. Hearts are coming. They might have him this time. He throws it out of bounds, and it's fourth down. And Coach Hefner saying, where's intentional ground? Yeah, there was nobody There's nobody in the neighborhood. He just flat got rid of that one. To, I think uh, Coach Hefner's got himself a bit of an argument here, but... Uh, no flag came in, so. Mm -mm. So, stops the clock with 5.19 to go, and it's fourth and 16 now for Taylorville. The ball remains at Effingham's 23. Neither team has used a timeout in this second half. 27-7, Effingham leads. 5.19 remaining. And now there is an infraction. Well, I was going to, I mean... So they move it back to the 31. So it's almost like he ran it a couple of yards and then brought in, or no, maybe he was back behind the line of scrimmage and lost five on the play. It was the 23. If they gained to the 21 and then the 10-yard walk-off, that would put it at the 31. Fourth and 24 at the 31-yard line. Huge play here and all kinds of movement on the line. I don't know who jumped. Someone jumped. It's a procedure penalty, and it's on Taylorville. Motion penalty on Taylorville. That'll move it back another five yards. So now it'll go back to the 36. Kind so, of imploding all of a sudden for the for the tornadoes. Yep, they understand they have a long way to go and a short time to get there. Well, and they thought they had a touchdown. Yeah. I mean. It might have been an illegal. It might have been an illegal receiver downfield. That I didn't see a hold call. The procedure penalty here moves it back five yards to the 36. So it's fourth and 29 now. They had the ball at the Hearts 36. They did have it at the 18. Hearts blitz. Dalton Fox is after the quarterback. That could be a penalty. Here's a pass down to the end zone. Incomplete. Hearts football. 
Hards football. Boy, Dalton Fox had him dead to rights, and I'm pretty sure he got <laughs> he got, got hit from behind, but no call. And the pass is incomplete to the end zone. That'll give it to Effingham. Hearts had the ball first and ten at their own 36. So the Hearts defense held, and it'll be first and ten Effingham with 5-10 remaining, Dustin, to start this drive. Hearts on top, 27-7. <clears throat> yep. Take care of the football. Yeah, absolutely. Next week, the Hearts go to Mount Zion. They were having a tussle with Lincoln tonight. Let's see what happens here with Pontius up under center on first and ten. Handoff. That's Westendorf. Look at him. Made contact. Still on his feet. Goodness. He's out across the 45-yard line. Hang on to the football, John. The gain is to the 47, from the 36 to the 47, an 11-yard gain and another first down for Effingham. It's an 11-yard drag. He was <laughs> dragging the gray jerseys along with him, maybe one of his own teammates just for good measure. But, yeah, that's uh, – I mean, that's been the story of the game. You know, Taylorville just has been physically outmatched in this game. Effingham has imposed its will on the middle of the field, and its running backs have been – very difficult to bring down, and they've pretty well dominated this game. We're under five minutes to play. 4.35 left. The Hearts lead at 27-7. First and 10 at their own 47. Here's the handoff. Westendorf got pile-driven that time. That time they stopped him. And he's a little slow getting up. Now he's good. And they will set the ball down to the 46, so they lost a yard. So it's second and 11. But the clock continues to run, and that's the big thing here. Down to 409 left in this one. Hearts lead at 27 to 7. With the win, they'll go to 2 and 3. And they'll be 2 and 2 in the Apollo. And this year, 2 and 2 doesn't look so bad. Let's see what happens here. Up under center on second and 11. Here's the handoff, West North. Look at the hole up the middle. He gets it into Taylorville territory to the 45-yard line. Big gain. Not enough for a first down, but a big gallop nonetheless. So from the 46 of Effingham to the 45 of Taylorville, that's a nine-yard gallop, and that'll make it third and two. 130 for John on his 22nd carry. Man, oh, man. Keegan Down. Baker at 84 and Tanner Pontius with 40. I mean, Effingham has run the football extremely well tonight. We're down to 315 in this one. We'll talk with Coach Hefner on the post-game show. Dustin's going to have some eye-popping stats. He just shared some of them there. Give you a little whet of the appetite here. Handoff, Westendorf right of center, still on his feet. He gets it inside the 40 near the 35. Plenty enough for another first down. And we're under three minutes to play. Football is set down at the 36. So from the 45 to the 36, again a nine. And another Hearts first down. Effingham crowd below us here on this side of the field having some fun down there. CJ's probably picking a lot of that up. He'll have the video up this weekend on this one. This one has been a lot of fun. We'll get a visit with Coach Hefner on the post game show. That should be a happy visit. 27 to 7 Effingham. 2.29 to go in this one. At the 36. Handoff up the middle and not much as it ends up maybe to the 35. He might have actually got a yard out of that. Yeah, I think they are going to give him a well earned yard as the pile just sort of <laughs> converged on him and pushed him backwards. But uh, the forward progress is going to be good for a yard for John. Big John to the 35, gain of one. Hearts continue to drive and the clock continues to run. And Taylorville, Jeb Odom, a good coach, he says, hey, we just got beat tonight. Yeah, he's not going to, doesn't appear to be going to use any of his timeouts here. Just get everybody on the bus a few minutes earlier. Down to minute 40 left in this one. I'm not going to have a lot of finals in our postgame show, I don't <laughs> think. This game's rolling right along. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. Westendorf just kind of waded into traffic. Might have got to the 35. Not enough, I don't think, for the first down. But the Hearts don't care a whole lot about that right now. They'll score it at the 35, so a gain of one. Third and a long one. 
We're down to a minute 15 to go. Third, mm -hmm. third and nine. Yeah, I was gonna say you're looking at you're looking at the line <laughs> of scrimmage marker. I was indeed. Third and nine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Under a minute to go on the clock here now, so that's fine. You bet. So Dustin will have all the stats on this one. Caleb's going to have loads of scores, football and baseball. I'll recap the scoring, and we'll visit with Coach Hefner. It's all on the way on the postgame show. Here's handoff one more time to John Westendorf. Look at the hole. Off to the left side, he dives forward near the 25-yard line. Heck of a run there, and might have another first down for the road here. He does. They'll spot it right at the 25, so from the 35 to the 25, another first down for the Hearts, and the Hearts might not have to run another play. Doesn't look like it. The play clock is showing one more second than the game clock, and so barring a, barring a timeout, they're going to walk away from here with a pretty convincing 27-7 victory. Hearts a winner. Came to Taylorville. Post a big win. Final score on a football Friday night. Effingham 27, Taylorville 7. Post game show on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota. Located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. This is the Pro Rehab Post Game Show. Pro Rehab is your best choice for physical therapy. Call 217-606-3004. And John Froning at Pro Rehab at his birthday this week, so shout out to John. He was, I'm sure, happy about this, like all the rest of us. Effingham a winner. Final score, Effingham 27, Taylorville 7. This is at Taylorville, and the Hearts came in and pretty much took possession of this game from the start. Let's recap the scoring in this one. First score came just into the second quarter. Came with 11.54 to go in that second period. At the end of a nine-play, 47-yard drive highlighted by John Westendorf's two-yard run. They tried the extra point. That was no good, and the Hearts had it up 6-0. Nine plays, 47 yards, 403 on that drive. Effingham scored again with 10.26 to go in the third quarter. That's when they really took over the game that third quarter. That was at the end of a four-play, 70-yard drive that took a minute 34 off the clock, and what a pass play. It was a strike from Tanner Pontius to Armando Estrada. 59 yards. Kick was good by Estrada. And the Hearts had it up 13-0, again with 10-26 left in the third. Effingham scored again with 3-13 to go in the third quarter at the end of a 10-play 48-yard drive that took 4-23 off the clock. And that was a pretty pass. That might have been the prettiest pass of the night. From Tanner Pontius to Evan Weymouth, 27-yard touchdown pass. The kick was good, and the Hearts, uh, that was by Angel, by the way, and the Hearts had it up 20 to nothing. Effingham scored one more time. That came just into the fourth quarter, 10.48 left in the period. At the end of a nine-play, 56-yard drive that took 3.57 off the clock. John Westendorf carried it in from 25 yards out. The kick was good, and the Hearts had it up 27 to nothing. Now, Taylorville tried a little razzle-dazzle just a minute later and had a big gain then through a big touchdown pass from Cameron Heimsness to Mathan and that was good for 35 yards and a touchdown. Again, that came with 9.57 left in the game, a two-play 75-yard drive that took 51 seconds, and you started to get a little nervous. The kick was good, and Taylorville had gotten within 27-7. to seven. Then they had another pretty good drive, and all of a sudden you were getting kind of nervous, but then a series of penalties really caused Taylorville to shoot themselves in the foot, and they ended up losing big yardage. They are at one point where at the Hearts 18, I think they had it back around the 40 by the time all the penalties uh, were assessed. And so, thank you, Mr. Denton. Got me the tackle sheet. Thank you very much. Do you need me to give that to Coach? I need to give that to Coach. Can you take a picture of my phone? 
He's coming up here. Why don't I give it to him? Does that sound good? Good. Thank you, Mr. Denton. Gave me the tackle sheet here. We'll get to that in a minute, too. So we recap the scoring. Again, Taylorville had another drive, but, boy, they just got eight up with penalties, and that thwarted that, and then the Hearts were able to pretty much dictate the terms from that point. And Effingham wins it 27-7. to So Effingham, with the win, improves to 2-3, and three, but they're 2-1 and one in the Apollo, or 2-2 two and two in the Apollo. So all in all, not so bad. We'll double check all the scores from elsewhere in the conference tonight and around the area at the as the post game show rolls on. Caleb's going to have a lot of football scores, a lot of baseball scores. That's all on the way here in a minute. Dustin's going to have some great stats to share, and Coach Hefner will join us on the post game show. That's all on the way in a minute. Effingham winner here at Taylorville, 27 to 7. More post game in a minute on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Back at Taylorville, final score tonight, Effingham 27, Taylorville 7, and I want to hear Dustin's numbers on this one. Well, Effingham ended up uh, outgaining Taylorville 387 to 188 for the game tonight. Hearts ran 65 plays from scrimmage to just 34 for the Tornadoes, so they uh, – Really had a big, I mean, it was a big second half. Effingham ended up running the ball 278 yards on 58 attempts. That's a 4.8 yard average and very consistent from the first half to second half or right around that 4.8 yard uh, per carry mark in each of the first two, uh, each of the halves. Uh, scored one touchdown in each half. Uh, two of their four scores came on the ground. Uh, Taylorville 82 rushing yards on 20 attempts. Now, 4.1 yards per carry, you're thinking, well, they ran the ball pretty well. Well, 40 of those yards came on one play. Other than that, Effingham really r limited the uh, Tornado's uh, output on the ground. And then through the air, uh, both teams pretty well even. Effingham, seven pass plays, five of them completed for 109 yards and two scores. Taylorville, 14 pass plays, only three completed, but uh, 106 yards on those three completions, and they're only score of the game. Uh, first downs, Effingham had 21 tonight. 17 on the ground, three through the air, one by penalty. Taylorville just six. Uh, three passing, three running. So 21 to six, the first down story there. Uh, Effingham Never had to punt tonight. They did turn it over twice. They fumbled, put the ball on the ground five times, f lost two of those. Most of that happened in the first half. The one fumble they lost in the second half kind of came at a, a dicey time. It made you a little nervous. Uh, it was that drive you were talking about where Taylorville got the ball all the way down the field and then penalties kind of upended a drive where they actually thought they had a touchdown catch for a minute there. I think it... At the end of the day, I think that it was the illegal man downfield was the call against Taylorville. Uh, and, boy, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, took a touchdown off the board, and they never could recover. Uh, penalties on that subject. Penalties, uh, five of them for Taylorville for just 25 yards, but Effingham only one penalty all night long for 10 yards. And time of possession, Effingham held the football for 18 minutes and 21 seconds in the second half uh, compared to just 5.39 for Taylorville. So a 31 minute and 33 second uh, advantage for, uh, they had, Effingham had the ball for 31 minutes and 33 seconds for the game compared to 16.27 for Taylorville. So the Hearts had the ball for almost uh, almost half, twice as long as uh, the Tornadoes did. So they really controlled possession in that second half. Uh, let's get to your individual numbers here. Uh, Taylorville, K uh, Cameron Himesness, the quarterback, 32 yards on 12 carries. Uh, Seth Hughes had 38 yards on two carries. Of course, his was the 40-yard run. He also lost two on a carry, so 38 for him on two carries for the game. Carter Ostermeyer, 10 yards on five carries. Jackson Myers, uh, two yards on his only attempt. Himesness this again, 3 of 14 passing for 106 yards and a score. That touchdown was to Jaden uh, Mathon, 
Mathon, Mathon, 35-yard touchdown catch. He thought he had another one. That one that he caught in the end zone came back. Uh, Joe Lyons, two catches for 71 yards. He had a 62-yarder that set uh, set things up for uh, a bit. Uh, that reversed the field earlier in the game. Uh, Heimsness have punted five times tonight for a 33.6-yard uh, average, and I think that pretty well does it for the for the Taylorville numbers. Running through Effingham's offensive numbers, and there's some good ones here. John Westendorf, 150 yards on 26 carries, uh, two touchdowns, a 25-yarder and a two-yarder. And Keegan Baker had a nice night, 84 yards on 20 carries. So both those guys were very productive. Uh, Pontius, 40 yards on his 10 carries, and then Evan Weymouth and Armando Estrada, Armando Estrada each uh, took one run for two yards. Pontius didn't put it in the air much, but uh, when he did, it worked out pretty well. Five of seven passing for 109 yards and two scores. Uh, one of those was a 59-yarder to Armando Estrada. He had three catches for a total of, that's not right, yeah, uh, yeah 67 yards. I, my chicken scratch here. Yeah, 67 yards on three uh, receptions, but obviously 59-yard touchdown was the big play. Evan Weymouth, one catch. It was a 27-yard touchdown reception. And Caden Walls had a 15-yard catch as well. Uh, Pontius didn't have to punt tonight, so I don't have any numbers for that. John Westendorf, three punt returns for 19 yards. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, no real kickoff returns to, to speak of. Westendorf had a three-yarder and then you also had Dalton Fox fall on that onside kick, so he gets credit for one uh, for zero yards. And that's it. Uh, those are your individual stats. Effingham getting the big win tonight. Yeah, just uh, just a really impressive showing defensively too. I know you mm -hmm. got that uh, you got that tackle sheet already. So absolutely, yeah, it's some good stuff there too. I'm sure. Thank you, Dustin. Let me run through who got what as far as tackles. And Chris Hemwall got a tackle. Also, Connor Thompson got a tackle. Five tonight, five tackles tonight for Logan Heil. A total of five tackles tonight for Dalton Fox. Well, that one was a beauty. He also saw five tackles tonight for Connor Simmons. He's just been consistent on his performance tonight and this season. And also, Charlie Ring, the sophomore, had four stops tonight. A tackle for Armando Estrada. A tackle also tonight for Damon Calber. Uh, two tackles tonight for Max Nelson, and three tackles tonight, well, two tackles, one for loss tonight for uh, Maddox Burner. He had one early. It was really impressive. Two tackles tonight for Blake Bushu, a uh, tackle tonight for Edgar Castillo. Also a tackle tonight for Keegan Baker. Remember, he came in and got that big stop. <laughs> yeah. We're used to him. Uh, that was on a kickoff return, right? Yeah, he, uh, he gave somebody a nice <laughs> shot there in the middle of the field. And then uh, Ozzy, Osvaldo Angel, had two stops. So that's a tackle sheet. Thanks uh, a lot to Mr. Denton for making sure we had that. 27-7 the final. Brett was on his way, and as always, there's people he gets to visit with. And... Uh, I like that when coaches always have somebody to visit with. Sometimes we have to wait a little longer. But uh, glad he's having a chuckle. It's been an interesting season so far, so that's okay when we have to wait an extra minute. Again, a reminder, the Hearts travel to Mount Zion next Friday night. Yes, and as Mr. Denton said, I need to get a picture of this, so I'll have this for the game story, don't I? So next week we head to Mount Zion to play the Braves. Kick off at 7 o'clock and of course we'll have that for you right here on 97.9 XFM. Pre-game coverage at quarter till. Then it's homecoming the next week. Hearts are back home to Lincoln and then they wrap it up as far as the regular season with Breeze Modern Day and then Highland and that's how the season's going to shape up as far as the regular season here for the Hearts. Coach Hefner on the way, and uh, we'll visit with him in a second. Uh, thanks again to everybody here at Taylorville for their hospitality. I always like to be sure to say thanks when thanks are deserved, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Coach checking his phone, there's always 413 things. He's good. I know I ever send him something. He's always quick to get back to me, so... I appreciate that. So we'll bring in Coach Hefner and let him visit with us here on the post-game show. 
as the Hearts come to Taylorville, post a 27 to 7 win. Congratulations on the win. Well, thank you. We'll take it. Never seems like they're easy, Greg, but we'll we'll take it. Absolutely. I, I like the you know as many points as you scored. I love it that the defense controlled the tempo of this game almost from the start. Uh, yeah, we as everything else, you're going to get some things that you're not that you hadn't seen. We had seen in years past. He had done some option stuff against us, not not so much out of split back. We knew their quarterback was a big kid, a runner, and so we prepped some option stuff, but not out of split back. Took us a little bit to adjust, um, a little bit to adjust to that. You know, still, still a lot of things we got to clean up, man. A lot of things we got to clean up, but uh, it's a lot better to do that after a win than it is a than it is a loss. But still, just a lot of even on that side of the ball, where you get pressure and before a quarterback goes to run, and you don't keep him inside the pocket, and you know, as we've talked about this a number of times, people. It's easy to yell at the back end guys and, you know, why aren't they covering? Well, they're covering for 10 seconds and the guy ran outside the pocket and nobody kept him inside the pocket and they don't understand that all that ties together. So we got to clean that up um, a little bit defensively, offensively. Um, turnovers are still, you know, an issue. We got to hold on to the ball um, uh, so we can finish drives. It was nice tonight to see we made some plays through the air. We still had a couple pr protection uh, miscues tonight, but Tanner bailed us out some with his legs. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but enough. Uh, I thought we played well up front, controlled them up front. It'd be interesting to see the film, but I think we controlled them up front. Um, you know, so yeah, a lot, a lot of positives. Happy for our guys. You know, it's as we said, somebody down there says, <laughs> asked me about Miles Zion. I said, ah, we'll talk on Sunday. <laughs> That's when, you know, I've learned through the years, winning, winning is hard, and uh, winning is hard. Um, enjoy it, appreciate it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, enjoy it the right way because you put a lot of work in, and it, and it is hard. You had a great ground game tonight. John had 150 yards, something like that. Keegan had 80, and Tanner had 40. Well, that's mm -hmm. a nice combination. Yeah, it is. It is. It's nice to have uh, to have multiple backs that can that can do that. Uh, um, you know, got to continue to finish runs and continue to finish drives. And and uh, like I said, I'm anxious to see us on up front because I got a feeling we we played pretty well up front. Absolutely, it was fun to watch the line work. Uh, there were times when there were six or seven kids. It was a run play, but there were six or seven yeah. kids that were out front. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. We, we've been, and they've gotten better each week. We talk about, you know, just establishing a, a mentality and a demeanor to, to finish, finish not only finish drives, but the main thing, finish plays. Like, if you can't finish plays, then you can't finish drives and, and, uh, and tying that all together. And I thought we did tonight. It was nice to get a couple big plays through the air uh, uh, tonight uh, with Armando and, and, um, you know, I thought the other thing, you know, might go unnoticed. Caden made a heck of a catch on, mm -hmm. the, on the third down down there right at the chains where, where Tanner hit him in the chest. And he goes down and gets it and holds on to it right at the marker. So, like I said, a lot of, po a lot of positives, uh, a lot of positives tonight. Um, but it still just shows, you know, you get it to 27 nothing, and you can't relax. And all of a sudden, you relax, and all of a sudden, they run a reverse, and two people don't do their job. And next thing you know, boom. And one play later in the end zone. That's that's why, I, you know, and it's hard. It's hard because you you get caught up in the game, and it's again part of that process of learning and understanding. You know that that we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it through the years and and what we've built on and what the the previous teams have ha, have done. And now you got a new team that you're trying to teach those two. But we say it all the time: you're not playing the score and you're not playing the opponent. You're playing that play. And the problem is, all of a sudden, there's 27 nothing, and they decided to play the score. And uh, instead of being locked in, and okay, the score doesn't mean anything, the opponent doesn't mean anything. I'm whether you're playing Sisters for the Poor, or you're playing the number one team in the state. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to get focused in and do my job on this play and uh, do it that way all the time. And that's still something that this group still has to learn because that's yeah. that's a good lesson, and it's good to learn that lesson and still get a 27 to seven win. But it's a it's a lesson that you have to learn because against other opponents or other situations, um, we're going to need to to stay locked in. A lot of a lot of things I like about watching your kids play, but one is that you incorporate things week by week as the season goes along. And Evan Weymouth was a useful tool tonight. That's a pretty pass. Yeah, play it was. That was that was Evans. good. You know, happy for him. Um, you know, Tanner made a nice read on it, nice throw, um, and. Uh, 
certainly uh, outstanding execution on that. And, and people think it's easy throwing into the wind or with the wind. And you want to know the truth. Most of them probably tell you it's a little bit harder to throw with the wind because it's hard to control the ball and you don't know where it's going to go. And all of a sudden he's running down the field that open. And, and with the wind, it's real easy to overshoot him or or whatever. Sometimes it's almost you know the ball he threw to Caden. He spiraled that thing through it. And I know it was only a, a you know 12, 14 yard pass, but. Uh, you got to have a little control on that. So uh, yeah, he- heck of a throw. But yeah, it was a um, that was a big play for us too. And it's tough to come to somebody else's place in the Apollo and post a win like this. Yeah, it is. You know, especially these guys. I mean, they play hard. I mean, we've yeah. had we've had some great battles through the years with these guys. Mm-hmm. In my time here, you know, going all the way back to 2016, 2017. You know, we've had, we've had 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 a number of battles. So um, it's always nice to come over here and win. Absolutely, I remember a fifty to thirty-eight game here. That was yeah. that was pretty crazy. Yes. That kind of got the team got, rolling, got us going. Yeah, yeah, got us going. And they came to our place next year, running clock to us, and then we came back over here and running clock them. And so there's been a there's been a little heat back and forth with with these two. But but he does a great job. Uh, they they play hard, and and um, he always has some stuff for you that you haven't prepared for. That's the truth. Congratulations on the win. Yeah, we do go to Mount Zion next week. They're a load. Lincoln was playing them tough at halftime. I don't know the final yet. Yeah, but, Lincoln uh, Lincoln is vastly, vastly improved. Um, and we've seen them a couple times on film, vastly improved. Mount Zion, uh, very big up front, uh, very athletic. Uh, they returned everybody up front. And of course, they've got the Kehi kid back who's got a number of, of high level offers mm-hmm. at receiver mm-hmm. so uh, they got a transfer in from Decatur St. Teresa at receiver so they've got some athletic kids and uh, the same tailback is back for them so yeah they'll be a, they'll be a handful so enjoy this one we'll enjoy now. this one we'll worry about them <laughs> later right we'll enjoy, we'll enjoy we'll enjoy this one winning's hard so happy for our kids uh, uh, happy for our kids and, and uh, let them celebrate that and we'll come in and take a look at it tomorrow and Try and fix what needs fixed and get ready for the next one. Very good. Thank you, All right. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Brad Hefner, arts coach. And the final score again here at Taylorville. Effingham 27, Taylorville 7. We appreciate that. Now, let's send it back to the studios. And, Caleb, what do you have in the way of scores, sir? All right. It was a final there at Cumberland as Cumberland gets the win over Villa Grove Heritage 47-8. Currently in the fourth, it is Muhammad Seymour over Charleston, 41 to 10. It is Collinsville over Matt Toon, also in the fourth, 22 to 14. In a tight game going into the fourth quarter, it is Johnston City over Flora, 12 to nothing. It is currently Shelbyville leading Warrensburg Latham, 21 to 14 in the fourth quarter. And also in the fourth quarter, it is Mount Zion currently leading Lincoln, 27 to 16. Now switching over to Major League Baseball action. Currently in the bottom of the eighth, it is the Reds over the Nationals 7-4. It was the Rays picking up the shutout victory over the Marlins today, 8-0. Currently in the bottom of the eighth, it is the Yankees over the Red Sox, 8-3. In the top of the sixth, well, the Cardinals have a run lead against the Cubs, 9-4. And also in the bottom of the sixth, it is the Brewers over the Mets, 5-2. To one, and maybe hey Dustin, you can get home to watch the ending of your Braves game tonight there. But well, that's the scores uh, there for you, gentlemen. Yeah, they're actually they're they're playing one of those things where they had a game with in Atlanta against San Diego. They get got uh, called in the fifth inning. Okay, and so they were like, well, we can't finish it. It's getaway day. Everybody's got to play tomorrow. So they they decided that they would go. And finish it in San Diego when the Braves were out there later. So, so today they were supposed to start at seven o'clock our time and finish the last four innings of that game, and then at nine o'clock our time start play a nine inning game. You know the regularly scheduled game. Well, then, okay, and keep in mind they're in San Diego. Right. Okay. Yeah. Delayed start because of rain. Uh. <laughs> it's like probably one out of three days all season long that rain is going to affect a game in San Diego, and it had to be today. So yeah, they're they've uh, they they were down one when that started. When they picked that game up, they tied it, and then Will Smith came in and gave up a run because that's what Will Smith does. But uh, nobody nobody wants to hear me go on and on about it. I was thinking if the Braves could get two wins today and the Phillies could lose, then then they could trim that magic number from nine to six, and then instead. 
instead it's kind of looking like they'll be lucky to take it from nine to eight because the Phillies are playing the Pirates, and you all know what the Pirates are doing this year. I tell you, I keep thinking, okay, the Braves got it. Mm -hmm. Well, then Philadelphia is on a roll there's, now. No, there's, so. It's gonna, Crazy. it's gonna come right down to the last week of the season. Yeah. Well, anyway, final score here's a good one. Yeah. Twenty-seven seven. Twenty seven seven and I might be walking in my door by like ten thirty, something like that. And there's so. nothing wrong with that either. I I'll take it. I'll take it. Always a pleasure. Thank yep, you, Dustin. Thanks. You bet. And CJ, thank you. Great job as always. Thanks, Caleb. Wonderful job back at the studios. And hopefully I got a few things right. So for all these guys, I'm Greg Sapp. One more time, final here at Taylorville. Effingham 27, Taylorville 7. See you at Mount Zion next week. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Premier Broadcasting Incorporated.